Trying to get the skin of your dream for a long time, but can't get it in any way? On our website, you have a unique opportunity to get your favorite knife. Users on our site can hand out skins themselves, and participants need to fulfill some simple conditions. For example, watch a video or buy a case on our website. After that, you automatically become a member of the distribution. Go to the user giveaways tab and do what you like. Hellcase. My name's over, and I have the honor of bringing you the opening here of the new season of uh, Champion of Champions Tour. And I'm very excited to be here, very excited to be able to bring you the action as we are going to be opening up with a very, very much uh, known uh, tournament style, but uh, fresh eyes and fresh teams. If you're just tuning in, it's at the right time. Good morning to everybody in Europe, and of course, a good afternoon and everybody on the other side of the world, or just a very, very bright morning for some in America. But in any case, it is season two of the European series number one, currently going in through the close qualifier. We're getting ready to see which of the teams will be able to progress through. And of course, the tournament format, we haven't changed that much in that sense. We still have the play-in stage. As you can see here, from April 15th to April 20th, we will have this close qualifier stage uh, with the play-in included. And then, of course, group stage afterwards, uh, where we will have um, the Swiss stage, of course, the teams uh, participating in at least a minimum of three best of threes where they fight for survival obviously this the it goes the way as it always did the first team to go 3-0 in the group stage goes into the playoffs the team that goes 0-3 is eliminated etc etc until we get our eight teams on the other hand we have the playoffs of course from may 1st to may 4th in any case, this is Season 2 here of the Champion of Champions Tour. And I'm kind of excited to see how it goes this uh, time round. We have changed up the setup a little bit, or at least the structure of the tournament. There is, of course, now only a one Europe uh, as a whole uh, region, no longer north, south, east. But without further ado, let's go over the groups that will be participating in this close qualifier of the first series of Europe here of Season 2. Starting off with Group A, the teams that we'll also be watching today. We have, of course, first and foremost, the opening match of today, one win versus Laser Cats. And of course, afterwards, we'll have Ants Academy versus Viperio. Then we have, of course, Group B, and Group C, and Group D. In Group B, we have Sangal versus Aurora Youngsters. We have Alternate Atax versus Zero Tenacity. And uh, later on in Group C, we should have. I believe Sampi versus Nom, and later on Ruby versus Yano. Uh, that is, of course, Group C, and I believe Group D, uh, which will be the final group 500 versus Esmaga B, and of course, Secret versus Illuminar. But here, as I said already, we are still in the, uh, in the cradle of the start, so let's see how it goes, of course. As Right now, right here, today, as I already mentioned, we will be watching the one win versus Laser Cats first best of three of the day. 
at uh, one o'clock, aka one o'clock European time, and Academy versus Liberio, and then Sangle versus Aurora Youngsters at sixteen, aka four o'clock, and at seven, the last game of the day, Alternate Atax versus Zero Tenacity. And those two will be, well, those four will be our opening matches for Group A and Group B. Kind of excited here. I have the honor to be able to see, uh, of course, Group A being played first. And very excited to see how it actually goes. And of course, as I already said, starting off with one win versus Laser Cats. We have ourselves one win, the team currently um, having some big names in their roster, Neelan and Buster, two players from Kazakhstan, two players that we've seen a multitude of times, and of course mainly these two guys will be looking out for, and then we have some players that we've seen in the past, specifically J.O. for me personally, I've always enjoyed watching him play from Pro Stowe to Namiga to K23, uh, we haven't seen him in a while recently, but excited to see him back in action. Then we have Latik, another player, this time from Russia, uh, who I've seen in Aurora, and obviously they gave us that Aurora performance a while ago, two years ago ago but in any case the last piece of the puzzle here Eugene uh, the only player that I am a little bit less familiar with and excited to see what he can do and the legendary coach Solar who also used to be of course the coach for K23 in any case uh, going on to the next team going on to laser cats a team that perhaps I'm a little bit less familiar with a few players that immediately strike out to me is obviously Toxic and Tempe, uh, two players that I haven't had the chance uh, to see much of, but I've seen a little of, but the rest perhaps a little bit more unknown. Yaboku, Somnium, and Wonderful Y. Kind of excited to see what they can do. Young Ukrainians, uh, of course, also a Ukrainian organization, and uh, they only field great rosters. So kind of happy to see how this goes for them. And I'm excited to also see the veto. Of course, that's where the important information will come in. As we got ourselves the map veto already out here. Kicking off with Overpass and New being banned first and foremost. Vertigo, the first map to be picked. Interesting choice. And Ancient, going to be the second map for one win to be chosen. As uh, it is one of the only few maps that they have really played multitude of times on. With both Mirage and Inferno being kicked out, it leaves us only with Anubis. And in this case, it is really hard to say who is at an advantage. But one win in Laser Cats effectively have very few official maps played. So we cannot truly say who has the upper hand. But I will just for clarity's sake say that right now I think one win still at a bit of a better position overall. And uh, with that being said, I'm very excited to see this second season of CCT. It's going to be one hell of a show, I think. And I'm kind of excited to see also some of the names that we're used to seeing in bigger teams like Neelan, like Buster, like J.O. at this point, uh, participating perhaps in a bit of a different setting, but giving us a chance to observe them once more, to enjoy their game style and gameplay once more. Um, on the other hand, of course, again, we have Laser Cats, as I said. Uh, not sure what exactly to expect, you know, from given their past performances. A little bit on and off, obviously not always the greatest on point, but they have done okay-ish, we, so, we shall say, and hopefully it will give us a great performance here. Uh, with that being said, I believe slowly but surely we are getting ready for this, uh, for this game, hopefully. Uh, soon, of course, with that being said. Apparently, uh, with some audio issues on my end, we'll try to fix that ASAP. Not sure what's going on, but uh, hopefully we'll get that sorted ASAP. And, uh, well, we'll see where it leads us to. Uh, as always, audio issues. I mean, it wouldn't be me if it hadn't had... Uh, uh, <laughs> until, we <laughs> until we fix it. So we'll be right back after we fix it.
Trying to get the skin of your dream for a long time, but can't get it in any way? On our website, you have a unique opportunity to get your favorite knife. Users on our site can hand out skins themselves, and participants need to fulfill some simple conditions. For example, watch a video or buy a case on our website. After that, you automatically become a member of the distribution. Go to the user giveaways tab and do what you like. Hellcase. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe all the tech issues have been resolved. Hopefully nothing off too, uh, too big of an issue overall. I apologize for all the uh, technical uh, miss, uh, miss, miss issues that we had, but hopefully now it's okay. As uh, we get ready for our new season here of CCT, as I've already said, one win versus LaserCast, the opening series of the tournament here of the close qualifier and i'm hella excited to see of course uh, some of the old guard and of course some of the new facing off against each other here we saw the veto it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty close you know we we are gonna be seeing quite a few uh interesting battles i should say um and i'm excited to see what exactly the plan is here for laser cats uh, as before uh, they have chosen to play on Vertigo, second map will be Ancient, and third and final will be Anubis. So, again, um, the veto of interesting maps, uh, with Vertigo definitely being perhaps one of the more hated maps in the pool currently, and I... I gotta say, I personally also don't take much of a liking to it. And then we've got Ancient as the second one, another map that perhaps has seen some animosity from the uh, from the uh, community uh, over recent weeks, months. Uh, with Anubis, that has become quite a beloved one, of course, as the third and final. And one win, I have to be honest here, it feels like they should have an advantage. I mean, they're individual performances uh kind of top uh, laser cats overall we got latic who's currently you know the hot-headed player on one win who we can always kind of count on as the fragger we have jo who's been a consistent uh, player throughout his career and always performing when needed most and then we have neelan and buster two very experienced players with a lot of mileage behind them that of course will be running all of that together uh, on the other hand laser cats has mentioned already uh, tempi and toxic two players i've seen in the past uh, not a lot of uh, especially back in the day um, but uh, well back in the day it's like i'm talking 10 years ago more like two or three years ago uh, of course uh, it's a kiev uh, is where i saw temple uh, the last time uh, when i saw him so you know it's been a while of course but nonetheless we are ready i believe to slowly jump into our game in any case i'm not sure uh why we have some issues on the stream hopefully we'll get that fixed for some reason audio is still an issue as we are getting ready to begin we'll jump of course into the game as soon as we are prepared
so. Once again, I hope that everything is going to work out fine. <laughs> I really am sorry about any sort of uh, technical issues we've been experiencing. Of course, the first day is here. I mean, what are, you know, guys, what else do you expect? It's the first day of uh, the broadcast. It's always going to be an issue. I mean, the major had an issue. The, the, the IM had an issue. Everything, you know, everything is solved. Everything will be solved. So no biggie, no problems. We will be getting ourselves ready to enjoy CS soon enough, hopefully ASAP. And we without the uh, double echo sounding of myself. Um, and we're just gonna have to find that little uh, weasel that's weaseled himself into our technical uh, specifications and weasel him out to make sure everything works as it should, as it always does. But as I said, right, first day, I mean, it's it's at this point a CS standard. There, there couldn't be CS without some tech issues, right? The state of the game currently, not know it if you're playing premiere you're kind of getting screwed if you're playing face it well there's still a few cheaters not a lot but you know it can still happen um of course in this case uh, on face it much better at least for me personally uh but yeah premiere not good so the state of the game kind of encapsulates everything together but with that being said i hope we're finally ready to begin without too many issues and we're ready to jump into the series here asap hopefully without too much of a delay now as uh, i believe we've resolved as well everything that we could have resolved um looking at uh, looking at the numbers uh, as i've already said it's it's been an interesting development and whew, i hear myself again in my headphones so i gotta mute that stream a little bit hopefully we'll fix that asap And I believe perhaps we are prepared to jump in to our first game without too many of an issue, too much of an issue. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in round one on map one here as getting ready to begin. Or if the issue will persist. Try our damnedest to make sure it does not. One win, currently on the pistol. Defending with two players on B. It's gonna be J.O. It's gonna be Buster in the deep, but J.O! Hello, J.O. with a hat trick. That T2000 really hitting hard. It's gonna be down to Toxic and Lag. They're gonna be playing best they can here. And well, Buster holding the line. Yaboku brings it back to a 1v1. What a clutch moment. Buster at 6 HP, not looking too healthy. It's going to be solved with Yaboku winning the round for Laser Cats. And what a clutch moment there. J.O. almost bringing it home himself. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. What is going on? And of course, as mentioned before, we're kind of trying to solve through the problems. Hopefully, not too much of an issue uh, for you all. Uh, I, unfortunately, I hear myself a little bit in the uh, in my headphones on the broadcast. So, obviously, we're still trying to solve it as we go. But Laser Cats, well, they've already solved the question of that first round, and as you can always see. Or, as you can already see here, they pushed up B, they got control, shouldn't be too much of an issue here, hold the line. <laughs> and, uh, not gonna lie guys, the uh, audio that's coming out of, uh, uh, <laughs> off of me is kind of crazy. Uh, and not gonna lie, it sounds pretty ludicrous. As... We watch round two being played out. Laser Cats effectively taking a 2 0 stance already early on. 
Monster. Getting a little bit of an exit there. Eugene as well. And Laser Cats secure themselves the advantage. Although losing three players against the full eco, never the greatest thing. But not going to be, of course, too much of an issue for LC. They got more than enough money. They got the bomb down. They survived with two. They keep a few of those rifles alive. And we're getting ready for our first real challenge. One win. We'll be picking up the pace. We have ourselves the M4s. And, of course, a little bit of utility there available as well. Really loving the HUD, by the way. Grid has done a great job in Eden, of course, in handling this and creating a beautiful graphics for our game to enjoy. As we can see here, round three being played pretty passively. Laser Cats looking towards middle more than anything. Seemingly chasing that first entry on, of course, J.O. He held his ground on pistol. Can he hold his ground here against the AKs? Pop flash. He's been spotted. J.O. is in deep trouble. He's got support coming in. He does get one, but immediately traded. We got ourselves a 4v4 action. Buster holding the line from quad. He is about to be isolated, though. That's a problem that you can't really deal with. And Yaboku brings it home for... Toxic not going to be helping Yaboku any longer. It's a two-on-one and a clutch here for Yaboku again. He'd done it on pistol, but it was... A close call, Ryujin and Nilan now. Not able to pull it off. 1v1. Ryujin getting caught too early here. Yaboku not gonna survive the spray from Nilan though. First round, back in the hands, of course, of one win. Round four, opening up this time with an AK and a Galil. We got a few Tech Nines, actually a single Tech Nine and two Deagles. Laser Cats looking to go a little bit aggro here. First contact is good. Latic is going to be caught coming through short through yellow. Or Ivy, if you will. Trades back from Somnium to make sure Fusion does not get too heavy handed there with the MP9. Even retrieving Molotov, I believe, from Eugen's body. Currently, round four being played with a very slow approach to a side. Laser cast taking no chances. J.O., good angle coming in from Nealon as well. They're going to be trading off Nealon with a double. It's looking like this could be held for one win, and it will. As J.O. and Neelan clean up, that is going to be more than enough. We are back in action, I believe this time around, sound should be better, I hope so, as we are going to be going into another round here, win for one win, sorry for all the tech issues, hopefully soon we'll be able to solve it, if it hasn't already, our engineers are at work here, hard at work trying to fix this as we go as quickly as possible, I do apologize to everybody having an issue uh, about this, uh, not much we can do, 
and well we'll try and solve this asap if we haven't already i don't hear myself on remix uh, at least that's a good start you know it's looking a lot better this time around but it is going to be round six here it is going to be laser cats on the ak's and let's see where they take us as we have a slow approach again a limited amount of utility as well keep that in mind we got a few smokes we got a molly or two here and uh Let's see what the plan what the plan will be for our initial start. One win currently in a bit of a bit of a fallback position as it seems like. Gonna be going into a site to just hold the line at that front, making sure they don't get caught off early. We already saw it previously how uh, of course, Latic got himself caught in, well, a few rounds ago, I should say. J.O., good angle, off angle towards B, holding one, holding two, and the third will get him, that's Temple. But the trade here, unequal, and one win, they still have the upper hand. Latic with the AWP holding a side through short, wonderful, in a position that he might be able to catch off. An unaware Latic as he's holding from elevators. Oh, the challenge here, though, Ryujin's timing could not be better. And that will be optimal at this pace. As both Toxic and Temple now finding themselves isolated, out of position and out of control as well as the round, effectively. But, in any case, we are getting ready for round number seven. Looking at an AK save by Temple. We're looking at a Tech 9 on Wonderful Y. And kind of, uh, kind of a slow approach again. It seems like perhaps we might have some presence on middle. One win currently with J.O. holding that part. No A ramp control, at least no deep control. I believe there could be Neil and just peeking into it, but it does not seem like that is the case. A bit of a mid presence play. Again, chat, thank you very much for all the uh, support. The HUD is fire, though, not gonna lie. It's absolutely amazing. We got ourselves. Of course, a slow approach with the AK going in first, boosting on big box, trying to get a little bit of uh, information. J.O. gets spotted as well as tagged. That's a lot of damage early on. Oh, Latic, quick to react. Good shot on Somnium. Might as well be in Somnium at this point, as he's going to be slipping forever. Latic waiting for his opportunity perhaps once more. It's gonna be J.O. off angle. No way you see him. Wonderful does check it, but he's boosted on that little bit of a ledge. And that will be enough to give him the upper hand. It is round seven being played in favor of one win, it looks like. Perhaps towards B they try. Yeah, both of them nice little shutdown, but Eugen and Neelan. It ain't working out. It ain't gonna work at all. Temple finds Latic and it's down to a 1v3. Again, with no time to plant, no time to save uh, the round, but he will save the weapon. Win. Ladies and gentlemen, I do sincerely apologize for all the technical issues we had. I hope it's okay now. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy the broadcast that much more with my voice no longer being doubled. <laughs> hey, and uh, having some fun with me, man. Come on, guys. It's season two of CCT, baby. We're starting off with game one here. One win versus Laser Cats. I mean, we already started off, goddamn, but 
it's looking great and I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be on the hot seat and very much love this. And as you can see, one win currently. I mean, they're doing good. They're doing very good. As uh, we can all observe, performance from Leland is on point. Oh, what a stack. You don't even get to see that very often. Not gonna lie. That stack, I'm gonna use it in my games because, uh, well, it, it's a nice surprise for any T coming out to peak and challenge. But it's a B play behind it all. Latic holding the line from Electro from Generator. And it's gonna be two players in support. Buster and J.O. both fine. Neeland still a far cry from the rotation, but J.O gets the first shutdown. Laser cats are coming up against a very dangerous opponent. And J.O. with a double Somnium picks up the AWP, gets the first. Does he get a secondary? Yes, he does with a P-50 of all the weapons available. It's Ryujin, though, to shut it down. And that is round again to one win. I love, uh, though, I love the HUD. I cannot lie. I love the HUD. It's clean. It's superb. I see everything, what I need to see. And it's, you know... Great job, production. Love you. Thank you for solving all the tech issues as well. 6-2. And as you can see, laser cats, max loss bonus, but still not enough money to be able to buy into this with AKs or MAC-10s. They're forced to play with tech nines. We got a deagle on Somnium. A few utilities, yes, but this seems like it's starting to get a little bit hairy, a little bit too quickly. It's gonna be first contact on a ramp again. We got four players lined up to take sight, and oh, J-Yo, hello! Yaboku gets bonked out of the round. It's gonna be Toxic playing towards B, perhaps looking to open up on Buster and bust the head open, but Unfortunately, it's the other way around. Buster busting that head of Toxic. It's going to be wonderful with the return. Still going to be a little bit of a hairy scenario if Somnium can get a Deagle shot off. But we are looking at an A-take. They're going to try and get the bomb down at the very least. Not that it's going to change their economical situation much, at least not for the next round, as they get their max loss bonus. But it is going to be a minute on the clock. Latic just chipping away at the... Mentality of laser cats. Good night, Temple. Well, he gets hit in the Temple, and that is going to be down to only Somnium, who, well, might be forever sleeping soon enough here. It is a 1v4. He's going to have to clutch this if he wants at least a bomb plant. I mean, three players to deal with. Not really going to be happening, is it? As we got ourselves a very distinct advantage now for one win. They are picking up the pace, they are picking up the pieces, and they're not really worried about it. Seven to two, seven in a row being played here, of course, by the one win side. Currently, uh, well, we can say a mixed European side because we got Ryujin from Uzbekistan, we got Jo from Estonia, we got Latik from Russia, and we got Buster and Nilan from Kazakhstan. An interesting mix of characters, an interesting mix of players, but obviously they know each other to, you know, to some degree. And for me, Buster, Neelan, and J.O. represent that old guard, that original OG crews of the CIS scene where, you know, you always love to see them. I'm absolutely excited to see the boost again. Look at that, man. Double up, build up that tower. And it just works. It just magically works. It's almost impossible to break that. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's nearly impossible to break unless you have a good pop flash or a double nade. And I wouldn't be surprised if Laser Cats perhaps will finally get the memo and double nade that position down. Although, on the other hand, I'm not even sure you can double nade it from an angle like that. I mean, I'm sure you can over big box, but again, you gotta line it up. Eugen peaking sandbags. Not the greatest spot to challenge, but it's gonna be Neelan that's gonna be holding the line on A. I believe Latic close by with the support on the AWP. So there is enough firepower available here to one win. 50 seconds to go. Yaboku is at 26 HP. He's got the AWP in his hand, so that shouldn't be too easy of a pickup. But look at Haru's flanking. Buster is about to bust some doors down and make sure he makes some arrests as it's going to be first contact for him. Does he even... No, he didn't even... What the hell? He didn't even shoot, but J.O. J.O. goes through the smoke, finds two wonderful replies, but Buster's still behind. He hasn't even acted. Wait, what? Buster? Buster went up ladder. What? <laughs> okay. Okay, Buster. I mean, I, I see what you're doing, but 
interesting decision. He had a flank going on already. Lat, meanwhile, hits up on Temple. Down to Wonderful in Elevators Buster in uh, CT Halls. Of course, Latic close by, jump spotting, jump running. And it's a 1v1 Buster. He's gonna catch him on short. Of course he will. That's the eighth round for one win. There we have it. It's gonna be eight in a row. Two rounds being lost due to time running out on laser cats. One round of the fuse. The rest effectively just straight up murders. 17 kills for J.O. by the way. Just wanna point that out. He died six times and killed 17 people. That's, that's, uh, well, 17 players. That's, that's insane. That is pretty big. Huge, some would say. Oh, oh hello, Latic. I mean, again. We got our challengers, we got our challenges, and that is gonna be enough as Vertigo is coming to an abrupt halt for Laser Cats. Uh, soon enough, we might have a very one sided series if one win continues like this. It might just be 10 to 2 on the half, and then it's all gonna come down to a pistol round that if you fail, you get absolutely blasted into oblivion. In any case, it's gonna be a little bit of a slower approach again, Laser Cats. Not much they can do. And hopefully they'll group up and do something together. You don't want to split your forces up. Toxic gets caught early again. I mean, Buster just flies by, busting doors, man. This man has no chill. And he don't care about your doors. Or your... Uh, <laughs> or, your, uh, let's say, uh, uh, your thoughts. He literally just comes knocking. And he ain't asking. In any case, 40 seconds, three players about to run up a ramp. Latic holding the main push. We got, of course, Ryujin on headshot. And I believe Buster, or excuse me, Neelan is close by. Buster going for the deep flank. First shot missed by Latic. It's going to be elevator speed coming in from Neelan. Double down with Ryujin and the round is gone. Voila. Pull the rabbit out of the hat and you got yourself nine. One win is looking solid here. Absolutely on point. Unfortunately for laser cats, as I said before, uh, I personally do not know much about them. I haven't watched them play. Uh, neither the players or the team itself. Uh, I've seen perhaps one or two maps out of them. Uh, but even then, you know, we gotta be honest, I don't have much experience with them, so it's hard to to measure how they will do under such pressure, but usually when you're losing like this, when you're in a position that currently laser cats are in, you know, tensions are high, nerves get on you, uh, you know, nerves start to build up, and things start to get out of control. Here, it's gonna be an A push. All five players effectively ready for the A take. Ryujin alone, how is Ryujin able to take this duel alone? Again, mistakes, laser cats. You're allowing CTs to peek into you, get those challenges and almost get away safely. Neelan might have been traded off at Sandbags. Not a great position to be in, but at the very least, damage has been dealt on Somnium. Yet again, one win is effectively taking this one for themselves. So Ryujin this time, a little bit too angry on short. J.O., same position. And one win is looking like they will be perhaps finally dropping around in this uh, first half. I mean, they dropped two, the pistol in the second where it was a full eco. And even then on the full eco, don't forget, they got like three kills. So they've been super effective overall. Buster and Latic left made into the smoke trying to break the vision or at least trying to pick up the vision here buster good start buster is going to be going towards short smoking on the bomb latic holding from headshot i believe he will be jumping up on that box he does misses the first opportunity but he's going to be holding the diffuse Nope, nobody's holding the defuse. I thought it might have been hell holding it in the smoke. He does not. Latic finds another, but it's gonna be Yamoku that's gonna be cleaning up house. Is there still enough time? Yes, there is. 
Of course, there is more than enough time as Laddick saves the round and the half to go 10 to 2 currently. 10 in a row for one win. One hell of a series we're watching. And one hell of a performance we're watching from the side of one win. I mean, you gotta give it to Jo and Ryujin. They have been absolutely hot on the tail of laser cats. And I mean, you know, everybody loves cats. I've got a cat at home. I love her. She's a great old lady, but sometimes they're just unable to do anything because they lay in bed all day. And I'm not saying laser cats are doing the same, but they might want to activate those lasers and become the cats that we know. As we go to the second half, as we go into the second pistol, it's going to be all in here for Laser Cats. They got to win this. There is no doubt in my mind if they lose this pistol, it will be a 1 0 start for one win and a very convincing one. At 10 to 2 on the half, you don't really joke around with that. It is going to be first contact for Neelan finds Temple in his temple. And of course, on middle, presence by J.O. and Ryujin. Toxic has to hit that headshot or at least pull back. He does. It's going to be down to a B stack or a B play as J.O. checks out Somnium. Well, Yaboku will be cleared at Electro or Generator, if you will. Toxic replies. Ouch, J.O. Too good to be true. And that is round done. That is the pistol effectively gone. Wonderful, J. Unless he's uh, wonderful. He's not going to be going wonderfully. And that is 11 rounds in a row. I mean, what else is there to say besides it's a one-sided party and uh, laser cats are the butt of the joke here. Round 14. At this state, everything relatively calm. Laser cats, of course, force buying. They don't really have a choice. You've got to force buy here. You don't really have too much room to maneuver. Every mistake could be your very last. Love the boost. You don't get to see it often. The tower set at yellow. Uh, it's something that we see from time to time, but it is a... It can quickly get into your head, and you, once you do it one too many times, your opponent will counter counteract that with molotovs and nades, as, as well as potentially just peeking into you. But round 14, 50 seconds to go. The Ukrainian squad is suffering under heavy losses here on... Vertigo. Two MP9s. We got five, seven, or two here. And this could work. The B defense can hold. Buster is low. One bullet will bring him down. Same for Neelan. This is a doable position for the side of Laser Cats. Perhaps their first round on this second half is already here. And it's about to go that way. Indeed, there goes Buster. And Neelan realizes, you know what? Might as well keep my AK, as it is not worth the dying over it. And yeah, that's going to be a third round for laser cats. They win the force by. They win the round that effectively we didn't, we didn't think they would, but they're able to string together a few kills. They're able to put one win on the defensive, and once they decide to go B, effectively the whole of laser cats are ready for them. One win on the other hand, they've got to force themselves. They got $1.4,000 or 1400 if you're American. And uh, they're forced to play with pistols and Kevlar here. Neelan, the one that saved up the AK, could be the instrumental part of this round. Let's see where he goes. Seemingly mid. Pop flash ready from Somnium.
To those that are wondering, this is the first map. It's Vertigo. And of course, the second map will be Ancient. You can see the details of the matchup on the top of the screen. Ancient being picked by one win, Vertigo being picked by Laser Cats. Of course, both teams starting CT. In this case, one win starting on, of course, Vertigo CT, as we saw, and Laser Cat's gonna be starting on Ancient. Buster, first entry. Holy smokes, Buster and Neelan combo wombo combination here. It works out. Fusion with a Peter Fitty. That's why I'm calling it the best pistol in the game, price to performance wise. Absolutely the best pistol. And it's still gonna be Neelan finding wonderful. That's round, that's it. Temple, 1v4, baby. It ain't happening. Can't take four. And unfortunately, can't take even one. That's gonna be 12 to 3. Laser Cats, worst case scenario just happened. They lose the pistol, they up the loss bonus to 1 point, uh, 2.4, so 2,400. And then they lose the subsequent third round of the half and break down back to 1.9 with a little bit of bonus. Uh, that, that's, yeah, that's the worst case scenario you can have if you're laser cats. You're basically breaking up yourself here and, uh, well... Yeah, this is, uh, this is not, it's not good. It's not cool. I mean, it's not great. Looks bad, I should say. But economically, as I said, right, they go, they lose the pistols, so they're at two point, they receive 1.9, they force the second round, they win, they get, uh, well, effectively uh, 3,200, right, for the win, but they drop the loss bonus to 1.4 again, uh, to 1.9 again, and then they lose the third round where they only get $1.9,000 and effectively break themselves um, once more. Trading for the entries though, Somnium traded for Ryujin, and I would say that's a valuable trade. Ryujin at 15 frags, he is definitely doing great work for the team. And Somnium, unfortunately, I cannot say the same when it comes down to the damage. He's got 25 damage currently. I'm pretty sure that's ADR, uh, so average damage per round calculated at 25, which is, to be fair, uh, very low, extremely low. And the whole team of laser cats mostly at that damage. Uh, there are some variances, but again, damage is definitely not on point. 88 example for toxic. Oh, the flank from Wonderful J. He gets one. Temple comes in for the double. It doesn't work though. It's a one v two. Yaboku or apple in my language. Yabuk. Perhaps you can get it. Gotta bite that apple. He's gonna get it. He will get it. Yaboku saving the day for laser cats. Close calls. Truly close calls. And 5 HP. He clutches it. And that it will be another round here for laser cats. I mean, they're certainly trying. Cannot deny them that. But unfortunately, trying is not enough. You gotta win it all. You gotta take it all. And absolutely sm <laughs> smash them to bits and, bits and pieces. So, we got ourselves AKs, yes, one win, with Galil, a single Galil on Buster, a Tech-9 on Neelan, interesting choice, and of course, three AKs for the rest, we got a bit of an A presence, a lot of players from Laser Cats on A4 to be exact, we do have rotation from Somnium, what is Toxic doing? He's pushing into this, as it will be landed by his wonderful close range, it's gonna be Temple, doesn't even get a kill, holy smokes, that is not... The way I thought that would go, four players defending early on, putting a lot of pressure on ramp, trying to hold the T side at bay, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't go down the way they planned. And that is, I'm afraid to say, a bit of a wrap. I feel like this should be the end of the road here for Vertigo. Smoke onto Cross, Somnium has to hit the headshot, will connect, and four players are tagged up quite heavily, so it gives Yapoku a chance to win these duels much easier. There we go, two for him, 
two more are left, low HP, but it doesn't matter when it's Latic handling the gun. And it will be the final score here, 13-2, I believe 4 at the very end for Vertigo. Congratulations, one win, they win the map pick of Laser Cats. As we get ready for our second map, it will be Ancient. And as I said before, not a huge fan of Ancient, personally, not a big fan. But again, as always, you know, Laser Cats, there's a chance they could still surprise. We're used to seeing a little bit of an upset on opponents' map picks, so I hope that it will be the same here. Laser Cats, they'll need some luck and they'll need some love as well. Uh, everybody in chat, you gotta support them if you wanna see them win. One win on the other side, they don't seem to need anybody but themselves. We'll be back after a short break. My name's Over, and you're watching CCT Season 2 of the European Series number one. This is the close qualifier, and this is the opening match, of course, of Season 2. See you real soon after about 10 minutes for Ancient.
sick of just of the day one win right now on the verge of potentially picking up a 2-0 it all depends how this map will go as we can see laser cats starting t side as mentioned they're map pick ancient they're the ones to be of course uh, well they, it is being chosen for them well they, where they start with side and as we can see here it is actually Either I'm wrong. Oh, no, no, it's right. Yeah, no. One win started T side. Never mind. One win started T side. They chose to open up. Um, oh, never mind. I'm just getting confused now. No, it is. It is Laser Cats. I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Is it either Laser Cats picking Ancient or it's one win? I think it's one win because Laser Cats chose CT side. So it is one win T side. Yeah, it is Laser Cats. Um, uh, choice to start uh, where they start the the side at it is CT side they start off but it is gonna be bomb plan B already we've got a little bit of action going Ryujin with a double he is accurate and deadly Somnium able to bring it back for one but immediately traded on that point it is back to a four versus three three versus three smoke into temple uh, into uh, into cave as Neelan brings it back for one the defuse is not going to be happening though yaboku presses it again and it's down to latex to try and prevent it he will as one win take round number one on their t side able 
to bring down the defense. Well played and well done. Laser Cats on the CT side, as mentioned, again, they were the ones to choose uh, where to begin, and it is, of course, CT. Yeah, for a second there, I was confused as guys as well, but no worries. Production is on it. Great production. Love you, Staki. You're doing great work. Thank you for solving all the issues for us. And of course, right here, one win currently on a pretty regular buy. We got a few AK, actually a single AK, two Galils, two Mac Daddies. On the other hand, we got MP9s. We got a scout on Somnium and a few pistols to boot. Laser Cats playing relatively default here. 1A, 1 mid, or red room if you will, and 3 on B. They're a little bit worried about a quick push towards the B side, so they don't want to risk anything for nothing, and Toxic just taking a few pot shots uh, through, of course, that red room position. Minute and 10 seconds as one win is winding down the clock. or unwinding the clock, perhaps, is a better way to put it. It will be a B-take through cave. Ryujin will be coming in. Three players defending. Fourth on the road to get in close. And it's going to be first contact. Yaboku going to be caught as well. Smoke into short. Toxic in trouble. As well as Temple getting taken out. Two players left. It will be 2-0 to zero for one win. There is no doubt in my mind no more. As we can see, I believe it is Neelan hunting for that. Kill. Yeah, Neelan with a Mac Daddy. Oh, Ooh, runs out of bullets. That's unfortunate. 67 HP on the man. <laughs> Just what can you do? The answer is not much. Toxic gets cleaned up. Likewise, the force by unsuccessful for the CTs. And they will be forced to play full eco here. Round three currently, as mentioned, once more, uh, full eco. We got USBs and a single piece of 80 on Wonderful. Not much you're able to do in this instance. They'll be stacking towards middle, possibly with a pop flash. Yep, there it goes. It just flew in. There will be a single kill on Ryujin, but we got Latic still hiding behind Big Box. So looking pretty solid. Crossfire being set, and everything seems to be working out currently. As last player alive, Wonderful J is trying his best but unfortunately not enough one win off to the races once more with a brilliant opener keep in mind uh one win effectively won 12 rounds in a row on vertigo they lost the pistol they lost the second round so the force by round they lost both of those actually it was an eco so they kind of had a bit of a tough opener with laser cats winning that pistol but afterwards, it just didn't stop. It went 10-2 on the half, so 10 rounds in a row for one win. Then they got the pistol on the second. Uh, actually, no, they lost the pistol. No, wait, they, no, they won. Yeah, they won the pistol on the second half of Vertigo. It was 11-2, uh, and then Laser Cats won one. It uh, went up to three, and then a bit of a trade-off, but eventually ending up going 13-4. Mid-control, going to be contested. Somnium, close range. Very deadly, of course, able to get Ryujin before he gets out through that smoke and the flash, uh, you know, being overly effective to allow him to entry for free. Somnium going to keep himself posted close range to middle. Entry for the T side. Buster waiting his time out in Cubby on Speedway. Usually a position people like to wall bank. Uh, you can get quite a little bit of damage through it, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see Wonderful or, I believe, uh, on-site Temple trying to spray through that thin plaster wall. It's not even plaster, actually, it's wood. It's like a wooden board. Meanwhile, I believe Neelan tried to, s tried to do a little bit of a potential fake-out towards A, smoke up on-site towards Temple. We're gonna try and force a rotation. He does. Already we got uh, Toxic rotating for a second, but he seems to have read this perfectly. They're gonna go back towards B. Yeah, Laser Cats, now they know. The gig is up. It's gonna be down to Wonderful, trying to hide behind that corner. 
It doesn't work out as well. Latic and Buster. Latic with a double. And Latic truly great player. Very accurate, very deadly. As I said before in the pregame, talking about these two teams, he's definitely the one to be on the lookout for. The ex-member of Aurora, the team that also got to the major. Keep that in mind. Latic will find Somnium. And it's down to Yaboku. Again, he had quite a few clutch rounds available to him on Vertigo. Very few that he succeeded in. And Buster on an off angle that you can't really do anything about. And Buster, man, this guy, I've been watching him for such a long time. Same as with Neelan. Both of these two guys uh, playing for ages. And back in the day, to those that remember, Avangar, for example, or the VP time. We can see the replay here of the bomb plant, of course, or Latex attempt to hold the line. Well, Buster, finding Toxic, that's a great start. It's another semi, well, eco effectively with a... Hero AK or Hero M4 by Wonderful. Temple gets caught. Wonderful at 12. It's not looking good for Laser Cats, all I'll say. It ain't looking too good. As I was saying, Buster and Neelan, the ex members, well, Buster, the ex member of Avangar and Virtus, Virtus Pro. Neelan, I used to cast him on Simon, to those that remember. Simon or Simon. And K23 had a, had a pretty good stint back in the day. Didn't see much of him afterwards, but still a player that you cannot forget about. And I mean, he was part of EG. They were still relevant. But one win. Another win for the bank here for them. This is a very dominant show of hand and a tactic, tactical timeout for Laser Cats. I like what I'm seeing. They're finally starting to utilize those timeouts as well, trying to... Trying to see if they can um, get a little bit of mojo back, right? Trying to talk it out, see if perhaps they have a way back into this game. 5-0 is not a result you want to be dealing with right now, or at least 0-5. Because Laser Cats, CT side, Ancient, technically speaking, they should be the one leading. Somnium on the op. We got M4s across the board, M4A1S for everybody. Nobody's taking the fatty M4. A4, of course, that is. Nobody likes it anymore. I'm not gonna lie, I have it in my loadout, but I use it only and when um, when I'm holding an angle, let's say I'm playing Inferno Banana, then sometimes I like to take the M4A4 or uh, let's say uh, Overpass, you know, if you're playing Con or something like that where you need those bullets in case somebody pushes you. But in any case, it's gonna be another A play. One win will be wasting no time setting up the execution here. Smoke into Temple, smoke possibly into CT. We'll see where it flies, but it's about to begin here. We got three players defending, one donut, one site, and one temple. It seems like Laser Cats are reading this pretty well. They have the right idea. Does it work out, though? We're about to find out. Here we go. It is round six, and it's opening days for Eugen. Toxic with a double. Is it enough? The answer currently, not really. Nobody in donut left, so through the smoke goes wonderful. And he might be caught. He might be caught kissing the smoke itself. Wonderful. He's gonna go through it full tilt. He's a little bit lost in the move, but it's not enough. Latic still finds Temple. Neelan is ready for him through the smoke in a headshot. Wallbanks fashion. Somnium 1v2. The opera here having to deal with the mess that his team unfortunately left him in. I do not know if there is even a diffuse kit. I didn't see it, so I think at this point Somnium knows he has no chance of being able to take this one back for himself as the round is lost. The bomb sticked away too far. And that is round six to one win. Replay. 
We'll have a chance to see the entry from Ryujin. Then Toxic with a beautiful double. The thing is, when he went wide here after that secondary, uh, he exposed himself to two players and he couldn't really switch his targets fast enough or even hit the first target. So uh, unfortunately getting himself caught at the very end there. It happens, that's just the way the cookie crumbles and we are left with the mess for Laser Cats that they have uh, kind of created. At 6-0 and zero right now, one win is having no doubt that they are the better team. The momentum is starting to rise. Their mentality is rock solid and it will be nearly impossible to break them, I feel like. Laser Cats really will need, need that individual quality to show up and, uh, you know, be brought up. Temple still at zero kills currently. J.O. Getting caught by Wonderful in Cave. Uh, in Leopard, actually. And Wonderful with a secondary as he flies by Neelan. Good start. Yaboku. Does he see that AK? Yeah, he definitely might have seen the... Uh, not the AK itself. Perhaps the... Just a little bit of the barrel. I guess that's the AK, but still. Oh, yeah, that sucks. Latic finding Temple, 07. We got an ancient. Uh, we got an ang agent, James Bond, unfortunately. Ryujin is about to die. There's no. Oh, he saw the shadow! But he still can't react fast enough. Toxic, able to get that kill as he heard him running in. And that shadow gave it away, but Toxic, he's lucky that he's accurate. And Latic, 1v3, no time to do anything really. Bomb is lost in towards Donut mid. And that shall be round one to Laser Cats. Finally able to string together a little bit of a winning move. We can hear the crickets in the background of Ancient. And if you're attentive enough, you can hear a slight melody playing in T spawn. But this nice little flute, Ancient Aztec. Maya flute, you know, got that little bit of magic going on. Sounds like there's a witch doctor somewhere helping out one win. In any case, it's gonna be six to one, and this is the round to win, Laser Cats. You need it desperately. We do have quite a little bit of presence on B again. Heavy aggression towards double doors of B. Molotov to break up Buster. And Neelan forcing them to split, and Buster getting caught as he pushes up B ramp. Ooh, I like this from Wonderful, by the way. He's in a very advanced position, but surely to be anticipated. Oh, this will be a free kill for Somnium. Yes, it will. Does not miss the first. Secondary, not sure if seen, but J.O. will be taken care of regardless. Yaboku able to shut that down, as it leaves only Neelan and Latic to survive this mess. It is currently... A 60 second clock still to be played out. Or 60 seconds and some change. God. Damn. Latic's really on point. I mean, this man, that, that's what kind of surprised me as well after Aurora just kind of fell apart. To, uh, you know, I expected him to, uh, to be picked up by perhaps even bigger teams. And one win, of course, uh, I think they'll be very happy to have him. Um, in April, he was bent. I, I don't even know. Was it, was it uh, 2023 December that Latic got benched on Aurora? Something like that, right? And then the team, I mean, I guess they're still playing. They still have the lineup, sure, uh, but haven't seen really much of them. Resalt was the one to join them instead of Latic. Actually, no. Was it Deco maybe instead of Latic? Actually, not even sure. But we're not here to talk about Aurora. We're here to talk about one win. And Latic is doing great work for his crew. Joining them not too long ago. Like, actually this month, probably. I'll have to double check on HLTV to make sure, but I believe the whole th roster signed uh, effectively not too long ago, like two weeks ago, I feel like, would be the correct answer with, with the announcement of one win uh, and their roster, like at the start of the month. Uh, this eco... Not really an eco, actually, excuse me. AK's in play, Temple close by, he will get his second kill. 
on middle. Toxic gonna be traded out. Second player there, also gonna be caught though. Ryujin. This is the only player on one win that I have not had the pleasure of casting before. And I'm kind of excited to see what the man from Uzbekistan can do here. And he is damn good. He is very much on point. And he's already shown that on Vertigo. Absolutely showed what he's capable of. I feel like a test against a truly dangerous team would be even better to, tr to see how it goes, but... Eugene definitely proving his worth. And Neelan, 1v1, clutch for Temple. He had a tough start at 0-7 when it comes to the scoreboard, so he wasn't exactly doing the best. But this 1v1 head-to-head head -head duel... Check it. Oh. Temple. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that was ballsy. I mean, you just stand out in the middle and hold the defuse. Pros don't fake and all that, but Neelan knows that, and he will check that position. Here's the replay of Wonderful Falling, traded back by Temple, only to be caught again on Toxic. And of course, Yabuku with Ryujin on the refrags. And he did wonderfully, because he forced Temple off of B, gave time for Neelan to plant and get into that safety of the ramp. And now it's going to be round 10. It's going to be the op on Somnium. Ryujin, does he go through the smoke? Timing for Toxic couldn't be worse. He turns around just as Ryujin is about to push out. And luckily Somnium is there to hit. As Toxic is able to get another kill on Speedway. But at the end of the day, the trades right now looking still okay-ish for one win. Keep in mind the advantage they have. They'll be very much happy with it. And they don't mind if they lose one more player. Or if they had lost one player more than uh, Laser Cats. As they know, they can still win this. Wonderful in cave, and surely they'll be checking that out. He's kind of positioned himself into Leopard. Will be checked by J.O. It will be a headshot close by Temple. He's pushing in. Temple, why? I don't see reasoning behind him pushing into that. As Somnium will mark up on Buster. Still, at the end of the day, there's two players holding the line. But Latic again. Able to pull through 1v1 against the Opper. Does he know he went left into CT deep? He cer certainly does, or at least is aware of it. Will be peeking wide, sees the shadow. But slow walking, no wide peek. Will not work. Somnium free kill for him. And that is round three to the side of Laser Cats. Ah, this is the uh, moment that... Toxic caught Neelan as he jumped away from the molly, then Ryujin coming through the smoke, trading him back. And here, Temple with the push into into uh, into Leopard from Cave, perhaps a little bit too eager after having an advantage. Luckily, his teammates are saving the day. One win, back to the drawing board. They've got a force by Deagles, AK and a scout. That's all they have. It seems like it could be an A play behind it all. Contact from Speedway. A little bit of damage. We see Wonderful trying to get that control going on middle. Toxic getting caught. That's not the way you want it to go. Wonderful going out wide. Wonderful, you're risking your head. And he does. For some reason, he does. Round 11 right now. Oh, never mind. Oh, for some reason, my brain just turned off there. Uh, Buster obviously towards Cave, not towards Speedway, peeking, peeking into middle. He's being spotted by Insomnium, or Somnium, excuse me. If he walks on that catwalk position, or if he walks towards uh, Donut, but Somnium pulling back from the corner, realizing perhaps he should take care of that A site instead. 40 seconds. Ryujin will go in first. He's low HP, so he's going to be traded back here. Player spotted on B ramp. Temple got a lot of information about B. And he's still kind of jiggling around, realizing perhaps he should also focus on cave now as the B push will come through. Look at this. Ryujin is just hiding away in CT, trying to play the positional advantage. J.O. will peek into middle soon enough. Here it goes. It's all or nothing. Laser Cats need this W. On long, Temple will be taken care of. 
And it looks like it is a round eight, perhaps already here. Jo will be caught in the back, at least two versus two. It's Yaboku Insomnium. The fuse kit available. Two smokes available. First contact works well for Latic. With a scout, absolutely dangerous and deadly. Eight to four, as it is, well, eight to three, excuse me, not to four. I, I thought it might be eight to four, but for some reason my brain just turned off and wanted to almost say that it might have been the last round. It's not yet. One more round remains here on the first half. Here we go. Round 12, last one for the first half. Tactical pause called by Laser Cats again. And yeah, I don't blame them. They gotta talk this one out. They gotta find some solution as to dealing with that mid pressure. Pressure. I feel like they've tried mid control once or twice and they were relatively successful. But afterwards, they kind of just fell off of it. Never really coming back to uh, trying to hold it down. And right now it shows. It shows they're losing map control and they're not really able to do much about this. And we can see the money ain't that great either. Uh, we got Yaboku with 2k in the bank going for the 5-7. We got Deagle on Toxic, MP9s and Wonderful and Temple and an op on Somnium that was saved up. Currently Somnium the only one on double digits when it comes to kills, so obviously the rest of the team gotta gotta step up the squad gotta get on the server boys let's see how it goes mid control as i said will be contested finally a little bit more aggressively one win meanwhile just taking their time they got the advantage they know it they know the economy is broken for laser cats they don't need to push the tempo here they've got all the advantages one would want Wonderful. In a position where he should be guaranteed at least one. Although he kind of reveals himself up a little bit through the smoke. They go, the lineups are there, and they get two. Toxic with a deagle to get the headshot on Buster. And it's down to Eugen to clean it up. Does he successfully do it? He does. Wonderful misses his chance. Wonderful. No. Oh, boy. Shooting a little bit prematurely there. Letting loose. A little bit too soon. And that is going to be round 12 pretty much coming to a close. Slowly but surely, laser cats are dwindling in numbers. And... Oh, See, rule of thumb, if you think somebody's... If you think you're able to flank somebody, you should be doing it immediately. Or at least you should be pushing into it. Especially at a disadvantage. Now, sure, Yaboku couldn't have known that J.O. will be coming through the middle. That's, you know, obviously not something you can expect uh, that late into the round. But still, got to be careful here. Somnium, 1v3. Chances are this is already done for and we just don't know it yet. Never mind, Somnium. Quick scopes. Now down to a clutch. With 26 HP against Latic on the scout. If Latic hits one shot, it's enough. That's the thing. Insomnium, he will still hit it. What a crouch peak. But the flank under Eugen. And that is going to be round 2 1 win. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 8 to 4. No, excuse me, 9 to 3. Jesus, I got myself again. I caught myself again. Just as I reach chat a little bit there, I caught myself again. Um, 9 to 3, of course. I wanted to say 9 to 5, that'd be nice, but unfortunately those results are very rare these days. In any case... That is gonna be one hell of a job from one win. T-side Ancient going to a... Going to a very solid... Of course, finisher for one win on the T-side. And switching up into the second pistol. This is it. It's all do or die for laser cats. They cannot afford to lose the pistol again. Because otherwise we will have a repeat of Vertigo. And keep in mind that did not end very well for, for laser cats obviously.
at 13-4. Or 4 to 13. Execution towards B. Molly into default. J.O. waiting for that pop flash to bang. Doesn't... Well, he does connect on Temple at the end. Going through the smoke still. It's gonna be Buster holding the line. Two guys behind the smoke in deep CT. In cave, it's gonna be Eugene. Gonna be caught in the back. This time, the flank don't work for him. And this is an after plant laser cats can win. The only thing they do need here is a little bit of consistency and a little bit of crossfire. Play that bomb. Play that timer. Try to dwindle down your opponent's numbers before they get close, and they do. Beautifully done. Somnium Yaboku. The stars align. They get the pistol. And they will be safe and sound for a round or two more. Well, it is round 14, and it is round uh, of a full eco for one win. We're expecting this to be an easy W for Laser Cats, as the stack on A is not going to be disturbed. And this is pretty classical for CS, something we get to see very often these days. And you can tell that the meta for the game has changed quite considerably. Uh, these days, you know, CTs tend to stray away from too many force buys, especially when you have an advantage, you really gotta lean into it. Because if you all remember back in the day, uh, when we were, you know, when we were playing the early days of CSGO, CTs would always force second round, right? You would always force that second, then go into an eco of third if you lost the force by, and kind of just wiggled between that. And then for a time, uh, when the new economy hit, when the new changes to the economy came, uh, teams were keen on playing safe uh, or saving up on round two and then buying the third one. But that kind of came out to be an issue because you had a lack of utilities. Uh, you couldn't really buy head armor or helmet because... Um, You'd need the money for utilities, and the teams would still have weapons from that second round, usually Galils or Mac-10s or something like that. And it, it was a bit of a struggle, but these days I feel like teams have truly leaned into the advantage uh, advantage plays, right? So basically, if you have a 9-3 advantage, for example, on the half, what you would 99% of the time see from CT teams that are looking to close out the game as quickly as possible, or at least try and do their best, basically play an eco, and then once they come to those guns, they're gonna be for, uh, they're gonna be taking up the Kevlar's, full Kevlar's uh, with helmets, M4s, or FAMASs with utility, and then just kind of playing on that advantage themselves you know they know their opponents are scared to lose around because if they do things are going to get out of control so they kind of lean into that uh, aggressive side and we see Ryujin and Donut he's looking to fill that up with a strawberry jam spots the player on the corner toxic going to be smoked off Molotov to try and break Ryujin position he does Neelan got to be careful in red room there's already toxic He's about to make things very difficult for one win if he gets one or two kills here. Pop flash in. It's a little bit deep though. It's a little bit too deep. A second player spotted on the corner. Is there a Molotov available? The answer is no, but there is a kill on Latic as he gets it. And even though Buster might be low HP, Eugene gets caught. Bomb planted on B. Four versus three. The retake is on, and let's see how it goes. First contact, great for Wonderful. He's able to dwindle down the numbers again, Buster and Latic. They're coming in hot, they're coming in ready. A double, double for Latic, god damn! Yaboku, 1v3, this is it, the clutch we've been waiting for, but no, Jeho surprises again as he comes out swinging from long. And that is round 10 to one win, as I said, 
teams that are well established on the CT side that believe in their success on the CT side and know they're better overall will lean to that advantage and basically play for the guns because they know they can be better when it comes down to aiming and well just generally precision. And this was a big mess, by the way, by Laser Cats on middle. I can't deny the fact that they kind of screwed themselves over uh, with that red room position. The fact that they had a deep flash that just went a little bit too far. The fact that they had two players there, but they went in one by one. You know, those, those, uh, those tiny details is what changes the progression of a round. Every single mistake could be your very last. And... When you're in a position of uh, the way laser cats were in a position of uh, of middle right, where they had that advantage on red room, honestly, I mean it's easy to talk now after the battle, right? Uh, I get that, but the way I see it, there is you either have a really good pop flash where you can rely on it, on it, or you hide in red room and let the players down on middle, either speedway or towards donut, or even a little bit closer towards stairs of middle. Um, to try and draw the attention on themselves, so the guy in red room has a free kill at the very least, right? You always try to play on that on that edge of, okay, you know, you try to fake out your opponents. Oh, we're not too close enough. You can still go a little bit further. You can try and, you know, maybe take us down. And if they had played like that, perhaps there could have been a double uh, by Toxic, but it just didn't go through. Then Temple gets caught, and Laser Cat uh, Cats are just getting absolutely lasered. As it is... Uh, Round 10 here for one win. Round 16. With laser cats luckily having that bomb plant earlier. So they will at least have money for the AKs. Up on Somnium. We have J.O. Letting loose a little bit of a spray in towards double doors. Ooh, Liu Jin. Gotta be careful. He's alone on middle. Uh, well, actually not alone. Neelan is close by Donut, but without immediate support, he could be cross-fired. Wonderful. Oh, that smoke is gonna give it away. J.O. still wins a duel. That's much more than I would have expected in a position like that. Toxic is able to refract but not before losing half of his of uh, half of his hp or more even 5% more than half which is 40 55 of course here comes the bxec this is it laser cats you got to win this this is the only way to get back on track buster holding in that corner it's a one way spot if you're able to get one it's a lot but he sacrificed his teammate for the kill of one laser Cats player, that is not a valuable trade when you're in a position like that and you sacrifice one of your teammates for it. Oh god, no, don't tell me Toxic does it as well. Toxic, a little bit too exposed. Somnium is low and the flank is coming. Neelan is about to catch the back of Somnium. There goes the upper. It's a 1v1, 1v2, excuse me, Yaboku again, having to fight this as best he can. In towards KV goes, but no, he's gonna challenge straight up Neelan. Not expecting it. And 1 HP for Yaboku. As he survives with barely hanging on by a thread. Round six to laser cats. Yeah, that was a close call, by the way. That's actually a good catch. Uh, the replay showing us how close that spray through the smoke it was. And it could have ended much differently if he had hit. And then Yaboku, of course, with a beautiful double, locking down the site and the round. Full eco for one win. A few pistols obviously to upgrade, but nothing worth mentioning about. Mid push. Now Neelan's time to shine, baby. Ah, they're not even gonna push into A, I think. There's no point. They've got four kills in T base. Just group up and go either mid or A or B, whatever the hell you want. But you gotta group up. Don't let Neelan take individual duels here. He's got a deagle. So if you give him individual duels, he's gonna have time to line up those headshots. And you do not wish to give him that. He's in a very sick spot, and that could have been a collateral. Holy smokes, that could have been a collat. 
it, it was a milli, millimeter off of being an absolute deadly double that could have ended up going 1v2 for a Neelan and then, well, we all know he can still make the magic happen. 10 to 7 though. We're kind of getting it on here. Finally, we got a little bit of firepower coming out from Laser Cats, or at least some performance that we expected already on Vertigo. And we can see double digits are rising for them as well. 15 for Somnium, 13 for Yaboku, 12 for Wonderful, and 10 for Toxic. Only Temple starting to lag behind a bit. On the other side, we still got both Jo and Buster on 9, but the rest starting to rise above the crowd likewise. 90 seconds. Laser Cats, 8 is going to be the play here. The 2 0 result looming over Laser Cats like a guillotine over their heads and necks. Three rounds, and it is done for for the first round of the close qualifier for Group A. For them at least. A lot of spray downs, Temple getting tagged heavily. This is gonna be a little bit of an interesting duel. J.O. gets caught, the trades are still not coming through. Right now, one win is potentially already looking to fall back, but they will try this retake if they can. Toxic getting caught early, that was not a good timing on the boost. As Latte comes at the right spot at the right time here to take him down. And it's going to be down to, obviously, Somnium not dying too quickly. And so does Yabuku fall. What is happening? The retake is on. It's down to Wonderful and Temple. Wonderful is coming in through Donut. He's going to have to have that timing hit. Oh, oh team killed by Ryujin in a 1v1. 1v2, excuse me. <laughs> it's enough. It's more than enough. Ryujin has the round in his hands. And that is... 11 to 7 without a diffuse kit by the way I would like to mention that was a 10 second diffuse right there and he still got it one win well it's soon to be two win if they're able to continue like this what a beautiful retake by the way I gotta give it to one win very clean very much clearing all the angles making sure all the the little corners are covered. They're coming in at the same time as well, which is the important part. You check Temple at the same time you're pushing out a donut and uh, long CT. So you're able, to, you're able to immediately occupy everybody's attention. Nobody can really set up a crossfire without being in danger themselves. And well, once the focus is off for one of the T players, he gets caught and then the dominoes just start falling. And that's exactly what happens here. Temple getting caught through the smoke. Fugin gonna be caught back. J.O. with an MP9 looking like Things are looking on point for one win. J.O. might be at 4 HP, but this man has balls of steel. Or steel balls, if you will. And he is jamming on his opponents. Oh, he's trying to get a AK. Nah, buddy. It was already taken, I'm afraid. Oh, he found it. Never mind. I thought... Oh, there were two players dead. Yeah, never mind. That, there were two kills there. So it makes sense there's one more available. Because I saw Toxic take one, or Somnium, I'm not even sure, was it one or the other. But this is an A take. Laser Cats will try their best to try and get onto site, get the bomb down. Through middle, perhaps Toxic trying to create a distraction. I wouldn't be surprised. Smoking Red Room, Molotov into Cubby, surely. Yep, there we go. Neelan gonna be mollied out. Quite a little bit of HP lost on him. 46 to be exact, or actually uh, 44. And here we go. A site is about to be lost. The smoke is up. Latic still gets it. Somnium doesn't wait until the smoke blooms. No. Classic rookie mistake, Somnium. You shouldn't go before the smoke blooms. You know there's an opera in play. You can't allow that to happen. They prevent the ball. Blend Neil and what a mad lad. Absolutely crazy. And that is round done. That's it. That's That's... Unfortunately, that much might just be the GG already, because look at the money. They didn't plant. They don't have max loss bonus. They get 1.9 thousand loss bonus. So right now, they are as broke as broke can be. And, uh, well, almost as my own bank account, we could say. And that is last time out for Lasercats as well. I mean, if, 
at any time you want to use it, the best time right now. Try and do what you can to try and limit and mitigate the disaster that is happening. But I don't think much can be done about it. One win just too good and on point. Ten seconds to start this round off. Actually, five. But here we go. 20 kills for Eugen, by the way. This man is cooking. He's cooking something good. And I like what I smell. Round 20 could be the last round of this first opening series of the CCT Season 2 of the European Series number one close qualifier, Group A. As Laser Cats are facing off a tough opponent and unfortunately coming up on even tougher opposition. Buster, ho ho! Is he about to bust these players out? Well, he's certainly trying. Gets one. Trying his very best. Good trade, by the way. Very important trade. Because they might be able to retrieve that AK. And Laser Cats, whatever trade they can get here, they'll be happy with. Keep in mind, they got four players alive. They can group up on a side, come up against four instead of one. Or instead of, uh, well, they, they can come up as four players against two or one player of the CT side defending. Because usually the CTs are always split, right? That's the, the way it is. That's the way the game is played. That's why the defenders always have it a little bit tougher at times. But that's the beauty of it. Let's see. Pop flash over. Doesn't really blind anybody. Neelan holding in a pretty good spot. The smoke is up and they're going through the smoke! You're going through the smoke, lads. 30 seconds to go. You're about to miss out on everything. There goes J.O. Trades back. Grenade from Latic, though. Hits Somnium. And it's a 1v2 for Wonderful. He had a great performance. But doesn't really pay off in this series. On Vertigo, he did some... Or he pulled some crazy moves here on Ancient. It just ain't good enough. And that it is, that it is, that it is, 13 to 7, ladies and gentlemen, GG, one win, will be closing this series out 2 to 0, eliminating Laser Cats uh, in the first round, they're not out, they're not eliminated from the tournament, but they will be taking them down in this series, being able to propel themselves to a 1-0 scoreline in the group stage, and of course, putting Laser Cats on the road to potential elimination. Keep in mind, this is the close qualifier. This is only the beginning of our second season here. And I'm absolutely adoring the fact that we see already players, you know, showing great, great pr promise and quite a little bit of understanding here. In any case, it was not exactly a very, um, very tough matchup for one win. Map one especially ended up going down very quickly for laser cats i feel like perhaps they got a little bit too excited at times a little bit too lost in their own minds vertigo kind of falling through put them on the on the wrong side um, of the river in a way uh, for that second map starting off very poorly as well losing the pistol losing the gun rounds having quite a little bit of an advantage one win kind of just propelled that into the stratosphere being able to take a 9-3 first half obviously confirming their quality already uh, but then afterwards they just closed it out when time was due with that being said let's take a view of or uh, let's take an overview of what matches we have remaining for today and what else we will be watching as we go um, for the first day here of the cct season 2 europe series 1 as we see laser cats one win already done laser cats pretty much you know down here but not out yet. Ants Academy versus Viperio is up next. Now, I will try to get confirmation whether or not we will push the schedule forward. I'm not particularly sure about that. We could be seeing a little bit of an earlier start, but probably not. And then, of course, we have Sangal versus Aurora Young Bloods. It is our third matchup that we'll be seeing at 4 o'clock. And Alternate Attacks versus Zero Tenacity as the final series of the night. 
in that with that being said i'm kind of excited to see what ens academy will bring up here uh and of course what viperio will bring up here uh two teams that i haven't seen much of uh, viperio more than more than ens academy for sure uh of course ens academy fielding a full finish roster um some of the players uh, that i haven't had
trying to get the skin of your dream for a long time but can't get it in any way? On our website you have a unique opportunity to get your favorite knife. Users on our site can hand out skins themselves and participants need to fulfill some simple conditions. For example, watch a video or buy a case on our website. After that, you automatically become a member of the distribution. Go to the user giveaways tab and do what you like. Hellcase. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the CCT Season 2 here of the Champions Tour. My name's Over. I'll be bringing you the action for our second series of the day. It will be the second series of the season as we open up with, of course, Group B here. Um, of course, starting off with Viperio versus... Actually, Group A, not Group A. Group A, apologies. Uh, of course, with Viperio versus Ents Academy. We've got ourselves quite a lineup, quite a matchup. And of course, before we go forward, let's first overview the tournament format and how we will be playing through this first season to open up European, uh, excuse me, first uh, series of the European uh, side. Playing stage, as I've already mentioned, from April 15th to 20th. We got the group stage, aka the Swiss stage, later on from April 21st to April 29th. And then we have the playoffs, of course, the final eight from May 1st to May 4th. And that will decide who will take this uh, Europe's first series of title and, of course, already garner quite a little bit of support for that general global finals of the CCT season two. In any case, ladies and gents, as I said, we've got two teams that we're about to watch here uh, from Group A as well. Ents Academy versus Viperio. And of course, uh, if we look at Group A right here, we can already see that the opening match that we had, the first official match of the season, one win versus Laser Cat, ended up going 2-0 for one win. 14, uh, excuse me, 13 to 4 on map 1 of, I believe, um, my god, why am I blanking? Vertigo, and of course, uh, 14, uh, 13 to 7 on map 2 on Ancient, putting Laser Cats 0 and 1 down. And of course, uh, one win go into the winner's match, not the loser's match, but we'll fix that as we go. Group B here, we see Sangal versus Aurora Youngbloods will be happening today after our uh, second series here. And then later on, alternate attacks, of course, uh, taking on, uh, help me out here, I believe, uh, Zero Tenacity. And we have Group C and Group D as well, but those will be played within the coming days. So kind of excited to see where we go with all of this and where we land up at, but right now, the important thing is to note that we're going to be watching, of course, Viperio versus Ents Academy. And let's first overview their roster, starting off, of course, with Ents Academy. As uh, we look at the Finns, the team that has given us some of the best players almost in the world and some of the best moments in the world. Everybody will always remember Alu's, uh, you know, uh, is this uh, Red Bull for uh, for uh, commercial or for drinking, you know, that kind of joke. And of course, Alexi B, we can never forget. Now we have Jim Fat, who is also absolutely amazing. Uh, today, we won't see any of those, but we do have the roster here for the academy team. Podi, Milzi, Tim, Henu and Sirva will be representing the Ents Academy team and I am excited to see what they got cooking up there because, uh, well, they are young, they are ready and they are hungry for victories. On the other side though, it's Viperio that they'll be facing off against. As I've already mentioned previously, they are a mixed European team. We got players from all around Europe player from Bulgaria, with of course Skrimo, we got Zodi from Denmark and Mango as well from Denmark, and we got
about uh, Pandizo uh, from the Czech Republic or Czechia today. Uh, I don't know why they renamed themselves. That's kind of weird, but still. And of course, Uppe from Sweden. Kind of excited to see how these lads do. Viperio, it's been a while since I've had the pleasure of casting them. Uh, last time it probably was in the East European series of CCT back... Uh, back in like August last year, 2023. And then in between, we saw them uh, playing for the Pro League qualifier, uh, where unfortunately they didn't get through. And uh, we've seen a few uh, stints from them, but as I said, this roster is very fresh. So this is a new team coming up here and showing what they can do. Now, Pat will be their coach, and I'm hoping to see some great performance. The veto is up next. Let's see which maps they have chosen, what we will be observing and watching here. Banning first is Vertigo from Ents. Very well. Second ban, Mirage from Viperio. First pick coming out for Ents will be Ancient. Viperio starring CT. Inferno, yes! There we go, Viperio. I love you so much. That's Inferno, what I wanted to see. Map I absolutely adore. Nuke band, understandably so. And of course, probably... Uh, oh, that's probably Anubis band then as the second band and overpasses the decider. So yeah, we have Nuke band by Ants Academy and Anubis band by Viperio. And then we have overpassed the third and final decider. And I'm excited and hoping to see three maps out of these two teams as... Uh, well, first and all, foremost, I love the maps, absolutely. Ancient, not my cup of tea, I will admit. I, I'm not a big fan of Ancient and Vertigo. I'm kind of, I wouldn't say a hater per se, but certainly not the biggest fan. But in any case, Sense Academy chosen Ancient. And uh, I'm eager to see how they can uh, give us a better showing than one win, perhaps. And if you all recall, Ancient went very differently. Um, well, not differently, but went very well for one win when we saw it. Uh, a little bit worse for wear than Vertigo, but still, Ancient was a, a good performance. Uh, a good performance on Ancient by one win, and I'm expecting the same from Ents. They've chosen it. They surely know how to play it. Inferno as the second map is where my dudes are at. Viperio choosing a map that has been with us for as long as I can remember. It's actually older than some people watching or playing the game these days, but still a map that I absolutely adore. Although it's getting a lot of hate and heat from the pro scene and the community due to its changes that it received uh, in the last two years. And certainly there are a few things that need to be fixed, especially some bugs that happened to uh, break the game and crash the game for the players. We saw that on the major, we saw that at the IEM Chengdu, two player, well, device crashed in the, uh, in the semifinals. And uh, we saw, uh, I believe, Jane crash on the major against G2, unfortunately then being eliminated from it. So yeah, Inferno definitely a map that needs some tweaks and updates but hopefully today will be no issue and the third and final decider of overpass which i think is a lovely map perhaps a bit of an issue with how big it is and how much room there is not utilized on it but still a map that has been with us for quite a while now with that being out of the way so we got our chosen maps we got our points or at least our uh, our battlegrounds sort of to put and uh, truly excited to see where we lead with this ENTS Academy, a team that uh, has a rich history in esports and has been around for as long as I can remember. Uh, and kind of excited what they can, you know, show uh, show with uh, with the roster here. Uh, they the core been together for about two years almost, and of course uh, Potty joining about 20 days ago or a month ago, give or take. Uh, but yeah. Uh, with that being said, I'm truly excited to see how this will go. Viperio, another team that has been around the block for quite a while and had quite a few mixes in the past. Uh, most uh, notably, I think, was that uh, UK mix with the Irish players, Artist, Extinct. We had Tadpole and Giraffe, and they kind of had a pretty good stint last year in 2023, uh, but never truly breaking through the eyes to try and, you know, to get on that top, top spot. So perhaps this is the chance to not only refine your skills, but also show what the new roster can do and of course how will they perform. As uh, I said before, uh, this is a fresh roster to say, about a week uh, old with Scrimo and Upe joining most recently. Uh, their coach, Pop, of course going to be helping them out as much as he can. And for Ents Academy, the coach will be Whitey, as uh, he is going to be trying to lead his crew through uh, the through the uh, battle here. Uh, the game is getting ready soon, so we won't have to wait too long. So my final thoughts on this would be, 
we got Ants Academy, who's doing pretty well for themselves uh, overall. It seems like uh, Ancient as the first map will be a good test of quality. T side not easy to play. It demands a lot of understanding, uh, well, a lot of knowledge of the utilities. Obviously, you need that smoke for red. You need that smoke for donut. Uh, you got to take map control towards middle and speedway. If not, you're going to be usually locked down by the CTs. So in this case, it's going to be a bit of a mix and match of how you want to go up against Viperio and what the plan will be here. Um, more specifically, how exactly uh, Ents is looking to deal with Viperio CT side. Uh, to be fair, the one thing perhaps I would worry about most is early aggression. Viperio, uh, new players, fresh players, they might be a little bit more keen to take early fights and Ents if they're not expecting that. Things can quickly get out of control. The CT side is usually able to take quite a little bit of the map and then, you know, they kind of punish you for it. But with that being out of the way, my prediction here is three maps, almost certainly so. Uh, statistically speaking, we don't really know who has an advantage on what map exactly. The one map where both teams have played more than once or twice is Anubis, the map we won't be seeing today. Uh, but uh, honestly, Overpass, I feel like, is almost a guarantee at this point that we will be watching it. But in any case, again, uh, not to repeat myself, I feel like this is going to be a pretty close matchup. I hope that uh, both teams come up uh, in strong, um, uh, with, with strong resolution, so they'll be ready for the head-to-head uh, -head, uh, trades and duels. And yeah, I, I just really hope we get a good game. That's, you know, that's pretty much my uh, core uh, opera oper uh, operation. Just want to have a good game going. Uh, with that being said, we're still waiting for one of the players to join the server and then the game will begin. But before that, you can see the schedule for today. The first day, guys, the first day of the CCT second season, uh, European series number one. We changed up the tournament format. It's a little bit different than what it was last year. We're no longer uh, uh, sequ sequencing the region of Europe into South, North, East, West, uh, Central. It is now all one encompassing region. The whole of Europe plays uh, under series one, two, three, and four, I believe. Uh, and we have the structure. I feel like is more uh, is is better designed this this time around. And I'm really happy uh, of how, of course, CCT uh, Grid and Eden have done uh, their duty and how they've played this one out. And I'm very excited to see where we go uh, forward in the near future with this. And I'm kind of happy to see the teams as well, uh, seemingly preparing for this. Likewise, and pretty happy about it coming back. And yeah, final few thoughts would be advantage, hard to say to who uh, or who would have it. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's perhaps more Viperio because they're not the academy team. But once again, academy teams usually can surprise. I mean, look at Mouse NXT, right? You can never really say no to an academy team. And young players always looking uh, for that W, always being hungry for more. And I'm very much sure that Viperio's players feel the same way. So yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. Uh, again, T side, not going to be easy. Uh, if there's going to be some lack in communications, if the focus is going to be off, uh, there will be some heavy trades, some heavy rounds, and hopefully the, the players are ready for this mentally and physically. Of course, it is one o'clock Central European summer time currently, so we are pretty much Uh, situated in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if somebody knows more, please correct me. But as far as I know, uh, a UK-based uh, org 
that, as I said earlier, in CSGO had quite a famous lineup uh, with a few players that are very much uh, recognized uh, on the scene. Of course, Statpole, uh, we got Giraffe, Artist, for example, as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see where this goes moving forward. I, I really am. And this playing stage, of course, is here to determine which of the teams is effectively better and who's going to have an easier time going into the main stage of the Swiss stage and later on to the playoffs. And it's, of course, not an easy tournament to play. You've got a lot of good teams, a lot of young players uh, looking for that W. As with that being said, I believe the game is soon to begin. So let's not tarry any longer and get ready to see the action unfold on Ancient. And here we go. Ladies and gents, it is Map 1 Series 2 here of the second season Group A, Ents Academy facing off Viperio as, uh, uh, well, I might call them VIP, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to pronounce her VIP, uh, as they will be starting CT side, we got three players going towards A, Dual Beretas for Scrimo, and uh, of course Pandito, uh, meanwhile we got Ents Academy already opening up on Zodi through the smoke actually, that's a mighty good opener, Uppe kind of holding the line on long B, but he's about to be enclosed from all sides, encapsulated in the bullet, says Potty will get him, Ents Academy control B side will get the bomb plant, and this will be a 3 versus 5 retake, not an easy job, not even close to it. Dual Beretas for both Scrimo and Pandito could be the game changers though. We all know how good, like how good they can be, how good they are. And so far, so good. It's looking pretty solid. They're getting a few kills together. Two versus two. There is no defuse kit that I can see, but potentially could have been still dropped somewhere on B site. And here we go. Action happening from the get-go. Pandito gets them, but it's not enough. Potty will secure the win for Ents Academy on the pistol. Am I seeing this correct, that Pap is playing uh, instead of uh, one of the players for Viperio? Uh, that is a obviously a bit of a concerning note. Uh, I will double check if it is in indeed the coach standing in for uh, the team, or is that just perhaps mistake on the HUD? We'll get that fixed ASAP. It should be Upe playing, but maybe it is truly just the... Uh, the issue currently on the HUD, we virtually know until we know. Henu, good control, Henu and Podi handling this anti-eco perfectly. We will get that info on you guys, to you guys ASAP as soon as we confirm. But it does look like Pat is playing at this time. And what the issue might have been with Upe, we do not know. But a good entry for Pat. He starts off perfectly. Pawdy with a double though. The refrag is almost instantaneous, instantaneous. And it really brings out Ensis Academy mid control to perfection here. It's going to be Pawdy on that catwalk position. Going back to Speedway, Mango looking to perhaps take control from Donut, but it's a dangerous thing to try and pull off, especially if you have no support from either Speedway or Middle. We got a double set in Cave as well. I like so far the setup from Viperio. They're basically playing to their strengths as best they can. Looking to surprise Ents Academy on any sort of an attempt towards B. The full finish roster, though, not to be, of course, underestimated. As Ents Academy slowly creep up towards B ramp. All three players of uh, VIP on B 
And they're about to set up this defense. This could work wonderfully if they can get the first. But Skinimo spotted. Takes quite a little bit of damage down to 26. As he, he is naded down. But they still saw the second player there. They know he is there. Zordi gets caught. Now down to Mango. And Mango better do this. The exotic fruit is hard to get. But it is going to be at least a 1v2. As Mango will rotate back towards A. Realizing they've uh, done a runner. And this is going to be... Potential for success. Mango finds the first. Milzi, perhaps going a little bit too far back out. Not going for the crossfire with his teammate. Potty on the lineup though from Donut will be enough. And that is round two. Of course, Ents Academy again. The gun round falls through for VIP. We will, uh, for as far as we know, it is not Pop that is playing, perhaps just the HUD bug. Uh, we'll try and fix this and get it sorted ASAP. But so far, worry not, Upe is supposedly still playing. In any case, they deep into double doors. Full eco here with a few nades to support. Uh, it's an attempt here towards, of course, middle with a little bit of control, trying to be exerted, not really going through. Mango, nice kill from Mango, gets Milzy. So a little bit of damage already dished out, and to be fair, on an eco round like this, you're always looking for at least two or three kills, so we can do as much damage as possible, and just kind of try and limit Ents Academy, of course, uh, Ents Academy's uh, economy. And it is Upe, I just got confirmation, uh, Upe, or Upe, as you will, body. Re-engages and successfully takes a control with the rest of his teammates. And that shall be a 4-0 opener for Ents Academy. Very solid start on T-side. Uh, as I said before, it is not an easy side to play. Ancient demands a lot of uh, control, uh, a lot of coordination, perhaps even better said, uh, for the T-side. You must have that utility out at all times. Uh, you need, if you take mid control, smoke into red, smoke into donut perhaps, molly into cubby. There are a lot of details you always have to follow through. And I like what Ents Academy is doing here. They've already lost two players. They do not wish to risk any more. And it will be all three surviving at the very end. Oh, never mind, Tem, a little bit too close to the bomb explosion. Actually dies, loses an AK, that's a shame. So three kills on an eco, plus an AK to take out of it. That's a good trade. That's a very good trade for Viperio. A good eco overall. As we jump to round five with a full buy, Mango on the op. We got... Obviously Viperio with the rest. And the utility still pretty settled. A lot of... Uh, Weaponry is available. Standard split, one, two, two. It's gonna be a little bit dangerous, perhaps, there for Mango with the op. But it all depends on that first contact. Ents Academy, smartly, not showing their shadow. That floodlight, as you can see, can cast a shadow towards that entry, and you can see pretty clearly Mango in trouble. Mango dead. Eaten for breakfast. Oop there we go. He's back, baby. Gets the refrag. That nade is pretty decent as well. A lot of damage on Temet. Or Tem. Trying to do a little bit of damage through the smoke. Waiting his rotations out. But look who is waiting on middle. The man himself, Hindu, will be coming as the flank, as the lurk. Screamo and Zodi are in trouble, and they are really in trouble now. That's round done. Zodi has no choice but to pull back and save the M4. Vip is going to be forced to, to take the L here. Now, if Zodi survives, Screamo has enough money, plus the loss bonus being maximum, effectively. We should be seeing a rebuy, almost certainly. But Zodi has to stay alive here, because both Mango, Pandito, and even Upe at the end of the day will be... Unable to afford a rifle plus Kevlar. Actually, M4A1S could be bought with mini-Kevs. 
but then you have no utility whatsoever. So surviving here for Zori was instrumental. Scrimo can drop a FAMAS. We should be seeing some sort of an investment. Zodi can drop an M4. Or are they just going to go for a half buy? Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a half buy. Fair enough. Uh, I saw a shotgun on Uppe, the XM, the auto shotty. I prefer the Nova, but that's just me being old school. You know, the Italian design always better. So yeah, two rifles here. Scrimo is the one that bought up an additional one. Looking to be a bit more effective. As Ents Academy is currently leading the charge at a 5-0 result, which is darn insane. Oh, is he gonna wall bang? Sirva? No, never mind. As I mentioned before in the previous series, that spot is quite wall bangable, and usually you do bang it. Molotov towards long, Scrimo, good angle. Finds the first on Sirva, that's an easy opener. It puts Ents Academy on a bit on the defensive. You've got to be very careful how you move forward because you can get caught in a crossfire and immediately lose two to three players without even having a chance of a refrag. Kenu once again playing that lurk spot on mid. Well, not really a lurk spot, but kind of connecting the dots through middle. Good angle for body. Close by. Dangerous, but he gets the shot. No refrag yet. Zodi pulls back. Him. Can I get Mango? Body. Oof, gets headshot it. Close call. Zoddy might have also made a perfect move here because he's gonna force Ents Academy into perhaps an even slower reaction. He hits another. That's Miltsy. Now the gig is up. They know this is a B take. Viperia will be coming in force. All three players through CT. But Zoddy gets caught. Oh just as the players come to support him. Unfortunately, he gets caught out of position. And that will be pretty much the downfall of this eco round. And it was a close call. It truly was. Liperio could have made this happen. If Zodi had stayed alive longer, if the pistols were closer, then perhaps they could have tried it together. Instead, still, Ents Academy continues. Six to zero. Bomb plant plus two losses. It's negligible here for Ents Academy. Meanwhile, for Viperio, a tactical timeout. Pap calling that one. Of course, Pap being the coach, he was the one to be mistaken for Eppu at the start. Or Upe, excuse me, not Epu. <laughs> Although Epu does sound pretty nice too. Six in a row, and another full buy. The CTs must string together a few rounds now. We don't want to let Ents Academy run away with the result early, especially not the T side, as things will only get tougher. The more rounds are lost, and well, especially, as I said, on the CT side, where usually it is considered to have an advantage overall. Let's see. Trying to find a bit of a opener towards H on A, or main A. Another smoke into double doors. We'll lock out two more players, well, two players additionally for another 17 seconds. Smoke on middle. That's four smokes now utilized by Viperio. They're buying a little bit of time, but they're going to have to fight after these smokes pass. They will have to take those challenges. Henu setting up a flash. It will land on middle perfectly. Bandito. Close range. Keeping an eye out on that T entry of mid. Smoke into donut. Smoke into long. Excuse me. Short A. CTA, if you will. Smoke into temple. And it's a fake execution towards A. They're trying to sell this as best they can. Rotation's yet to happen, but Sirva will be caught. Scrimo, the gig is up. Tem will get the refrag, but Zodi and Mango are delivering their kills. They're delivering the performance. Ents Academy have been tinned out. Two players left alive. 35 seconds. Bomb still a far, far cry away from being planted. Ooh, missed shot by Mango. That's a mistake. Mango pulls out to the right side towards Long. I think he's got an angle. I think he's got a good angle. They won't expect him there. Neither will they. Upe. That's the bomb drop. That should be enough. Ents Academy 
will be faltering under the pressure. And that is round one to Viperio now guaranteed. No time and no position to really play this off for a win. Ten. Last player here to try and jiggle his way up to survive, but Mango will be ready. And that will be round one. As I said, much needed one. They gotta string together at least, let's say, four to five in a row. So this is the first, let's say, three to four more, at the bare minimum, to try and contend for this first half. If it goes seven to five, it's fine. That's not an issue. If it goes eight to four, ah, you know, you're, you're going to be a little bit worried. Anything worse than that, and you are in trouble, Viperio. But again, it is the map pick of ends, so after all, we can expect them to be better here on this first one. Hennu again, playing that mid spot. Four players towards B. Very aggressive positioning by the CTs. They could be caught out. Cut out of position here if they're going to be a little bit too eager to take those fights early on. Pandito. Kind of expecting to take a challenge. Sirva. Close by. Screamo. There you go. The Bulgarian player will deliver. And it's going to be Pandito to additionally add on top of it as he comes out of the cave. Well, actually, leopard, but still. Oh, hello. Hennu, without success, not a single kill so far. Viperio finding their way back after that tactical pause. Things seem to have aligned perfectly for them. They've got themselves quite a little bit of control now. Good night, Podi. And round two here for Viperio. As we go to a tactical pause for Ents Academy. It will be Whitey calling it their coach. It is interesting, isn't it? A Brit, sort of to say, being the coach here of a full Finnish roster for Ents Academy. You would perhaps have expected a Finnish coach. But again, it's lovely to see that they are utilizing those timeouts. One thing we get to, um, to observe, or at least we get to uh, watch a lot of in Tier 2, Tier 3 CS is teams not taking timeouts. I think that's a huge mistake. Even in pro CS, uh, sometimes teams forget to take timeouts. Perhaps not on the big stages, of course, but, you know, EPL and such. I feel like too many a time uh, that is underutilized. You stop your opponent's momentum. You give your team a, a little bit of time to breathe, a little bit of time to recuperate uh, themselves and get themselves under control. For Vaterio, it worked perfectly. For Ents Academy, they are on an eco here, so the timeout it was more perhaps to calm the spirits, uh, perhaps calm Viperio as well, trying to disturb their momentum shift or the shift of momentum in their favor. Another smoke into double doors. There is quite a little bit of utility here for Ents. I'm wondering if they might try to pop flash their way through Speedway. If they're able to land a good one. <laughs> Mills is like, hello buddy. You want to give me that AK? So they just jiggle peeking. At this point realizing that close range pistols will be far more effective when there's five of them. And it's a B push. Here we go. Two players straight up defending to begin with. Good spray down, but doesn't get a secondary team kill on Sirva. Henu finds Pandito. It's a two on two. The nade could deal serious damage. It does. Henu's out. And it's down to Uppe and Mango against Podi. And they will clean house. Serious losses, though. The CTs are losing players. Economically, they shouldn't be too concerned, though. They've got more than enough bank to still buy in. And to be fair, quite a little bit left over on Mango and Uppe both.
As round 10 comes around, it's the full buy here for Ents Academy. No AWP. Mid presence being locked down. I love what I see here from Vaipiria. They're very, very consistent on mid take. They do not wish to give any ground to Ents Academy. And Henu could be in dire trouble. They need help from Speedway. Somebody's gonna have to come there and kind of give him a hand. Lend him some support. Zoddy, white peak, very dangerous, very ballsy, but he gets away with a free kill. That's more than you can usually expect out of a position like that. <laughs> Bit of a wall bang, trading back and forth with a few bullets. Scream up. Again, getting tagged for 25. Mango's holding a very tight corner towards Leopard, and if he misses, he can easily jump out of that position to save himself. Pandito's dead. I think Pandito's gonna be caught. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that plan here was. Pandito, it's a 5v4, well, a 5v5, excuse me. With 10 might have been taken out still. You know, you're playing a 5v4, you're pushing middle without support, you got nobody watching Speedway, you're kinda asking for it there. So a bit of a mistake there. They can wrap up on it, but bad good angle. He surprises Henu as he's hiding in a corner. It's an off angle that he can't really read well or see well through. Mango's got a free kill on Sirva because he's walking into it. Yeah, exactly. Good nade as well. A lot of damage dealt. Lucky Potty cannot die here in 12 seconds. It will be a save. Ents Academy pulling back to lick their wounds and try again next round. The Finnish team finding quite a little bit of resistance. 11 rounds deep into this first half. Well, 10 rounds deep, but the 11th being played right now. Another, ooh, another timeout, okay. I presume from Ents Academy, if I'm reading this correctly, they have one more remaining. So we had a total of two timeouts to this point, and this would be the third. So yeah, Ents Academy taking that timeout. And also, obviously, the, the color of the tactical pause kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> I guess I could have connected the dots earlier, but again, you know. So four in a row. I, I said it. I called it. String a few rounds together, you're good to go, Vipedia, and they do exactly that. Four currently, a fifth one potentially as well, as it is a kind of half buy here for Ents Academy. Two players save the AKs, the rest with a few pistols, so they're playing for that last round economy. They got max loss bonus already, so they're not going to be too concerned over it. If they can get a kill on Milsi or a plant, they'll be very happy, so they can all buy it. AKs next! Oh, what Henu! Just gets Upe easily in Donut. That's an M4 to be picked up. Or at least an AK. Yeah, it's an AK. At least they, at least they traded back for Miltsy. But again, remember, this is an eco round effectively uh, for the majority of the players of Ents Academy. Just buying up a few pistols with two saved rifles. Now starting to be dwindled away. The defense being pretty sturdy, not letting up and chipping away at Ence's mentality and as well as the numbers. And they're going to walk out cave here, almost certainly so. It's hard to imagine how they don't. And we already see a deep flank by Pandito, so he has all the info they need. This is a confirmation of a B push coming through. Zoddy is about to fall though, I'm pretty sure. He shouldn't be surviving too long. He does find one, that's a good trade, but oh, Mango with a molly in hand. Ay, yeah, yeah, that hurts. Pandito, what do you do, brother? From the Czech Republic, Pandito will try to swing his way out of middle. He is in dire straits, 1v2. Body is low, that's the lucky thing, but it's Sirva that has an AK and is almost at full HP, so this has to be a double dink to get rid of both ASAP. He's got the kit, he's got a smoke, so potentially could be 
A clutch defuse likewise, but he's running out of time, about to be banked in the back. And there we go. Ents Academy will string together a win from a very bad buy. With two weapons saved, it seemed to have been enough as Viperio get locked out of a win. And that will put us onto the last round for the first half. Remember, 7 to 5, pretty acceptable for Viperio given the circumstances. It's not optimal, yes, but better than nothing. And better than what it looked like at the start at 6 and 0 in favor of Ents. But this shot, well, not shot, but this attempt from Mango, the Molotov, it just came in way too late. It did far less than it ever would have, and yeah, I feel like perhaps taking a shot would have been far better off for him. What? What? Ah? Sir, ah? Hello? Screamo double? What is happening? Ents Academy perhaps getting a little bit too, uh, too, uh, too confident for their own good. That's, that's 75 guaranteed. It's almost a 0% chance. Oh, never mind. Mango. That angle. Being caught. Oh boy, Porty. He's doing the work. He's putting in the effort. The bomb is still dropped on ramp B, so he's got to retrieve that before he can do anything else. And, well, both are there, so he has, might as well have a chance to win the round, but no, it's gonna be Zori saving the day here for Viperio. Five to seven, and we will have no halftime breaks, as there is no need for them. We are getting ready for that second half, second pistol. Viperio now switching up the sides to their T's. Of course, Ents Academy CT. And I'm more eager to see what the plan is here for the Finnish squad. I still have to say, this last round was the biggest surprise of them all. Uh, the fact that Scrimo is allowed to take two there on Grand B, uh, whilst also catching off one of the... T-side players completely exposed the middle without any sort of support, without his weapon in hand. Just comes as a bit of a shock, really. And currently, we're not, I do not see the game screen. There we go, we're back. Body finds Uppe, Screamo trades it. Viperio so far on the good track to be. Miltsy, P2000. I prefer it lately as well to the USB. I find it to be a bit easier to uh, take fights with. And there we go, first contact, mid Miltsy. Reloads, no, actually didn't reload. Still out of bullets. Oh, damn! Okay, down to Screamo, 1v2, low HP, he's got the duelies, he's got the headshot, Screamo! Can he do it? Doesn't even need to reload. He's got a full magazine, but Miltsy! He's faster! And he will secure the round here. At the last second, Ents Academy able to string together the win on the pistol of the CT side of theirs. And, yeah, I think Miltsy shows his excitement as well. Makes sense. Very important win here. Seventeen kills on Poddy, by the way. Twelve on Screamo. These two are doing all the legwork. I mean, none of them are really shying away from the work, to be fair. But none has really surpassed uh, ten at this time, besides the two that I've mentioned. Ooh, Pandito. This is going to be the first contact on middle in Cubby. It's the one and only. It's Henry. And I don't think they might... I don't think they'll check it! They don't check it! No! But Henu does not have trigger discipline. He immediately takes the fight, loses his duels, and Tem will find two. That's a good trade-off. Ents Academy still have a man advantage, albeit Pori is low, yes. But he can be a nuisance. He can be the distraction. And if Ents play it right, this is not going to be an easy win for Viperio. Oh, Pori, a little bit too soon. As Miltsy comes out from Temple as well, he will be the surprise factor now. They do not anticipate the secondary player. And Miltsy, whilst the bomb goes down, he still gets both. And gets another round for Ents Academy. Viperio, they got the bomb plant though. That's an important marker here. I believe with that, 
should be a half buy. Now, if you're feeling lucky, right? If, if you're ends here, uh, excuse me, not ends. If you're repatio here, you're thinking maybe we can try something like Mac 10 uh, play into fast B if you're really feeling lucky. Or if you're feeling a little bit safer than that, you know, go A, try and take control, get the bomb down, try and do some damage. And they're feeling really lucky because they full bot. Okay, Galil's out in four, so we got a Mac 10 and a Tech 9, and it is going to be a B play. But they are taking a long time here. And they are going to be mollied out of controlling a ramp effectively as Screamo goes out first. Again, good entry. Screamo knows where Sirva is. He's going to be fine. He gets it. Screamo! What a play. He actually puts his team far ahead, and this should be a safe for Ents already. There's just no point in Ents losing more players. Money-wise, Ents not really looking too good. They pretty much dipped deep into their pockets to get those M4s out. So that will be round six to Viperio. They will kick off in high gear with this force buy. Or kick off into high gear, I guess. Eh. <laughs> Screamo, man. Mad lad. As the Brits would say. He catches off Milzy for free. I mean, that's something that never should have happened in the first place. Ents Academy, miscommunication or perhaps misunderstanding. The thing is, you never want to have uh, both players just tucked away in a corner. Nobody watching that push on ramp. Screamo needed to be engaged as soon as he started running up that ramp because... We see what happens if you don't. Milzy free kill on him, and then obviously Sirva getting caught in the corner. Not really much you can do with an M4 when the Mac 10 is pushing down on you. So a tactical time on being utilized here. Discussing what to do next. I believe this was a Viperio timeout. I need to double check, but I'm fairly certain it was. Yeah, it was. They used their second timeout here. They have one more left. And ends, of course. Full investment. Three rifles, two MP9s. The SMGs can make short work of the opponents, but they got a hit right. Two mollies into middle, and oh, this is fast on A. I love this, Viperio. Right call, perfect call, really. Best possible call you could have made. And I think this could have had to do something with Path as well, the coach. Reading into Ens' defense, realizing, you know what? They're not really playing on A. Let's just force an engagement there and that's what they do they get side control they'll get the bomb down soon mango burns head new through the smoke milzy hits on pandito so the bomb delayed a tiny bit longer two players in donut two players in ct this will be a crunch setup and if the ct's play it right they've got a few flashbangs they can utilize well just one actually but still Oh, that is... That sucks. The team kill on Milzy. And then obviously the subsequent... Secondary from Screamo. Smoke on the bomb. Temu is looking to find a way into this, but he's low for 10 minutes. So, off to the races, full eco, Ents Academy wasting no time, pushing middle. Oh nice, that's actually pretty cool. They get a free AK. They might do some more damage, but B-side is going to be lost in the process. So not much you can do about this.
Zen's Academy effectively stacking T base. <laughs> I mean, not gonna lie, I would have loved to see these USPs try and hunt somebody else down as well. The USPs have no value whatsoever, so trying to get those kills is important, but that's what they're doing, I guess, here, stacking T-Base, and, well, Viperio is about to walk in a trap. And if Admiral Akbar would be here, he'd already be saying, it's a trap, as uh, he was unceremoniously killed in Star Wars. I still hate that. I hate the new Star Wars movies and I'm one of the biggest Star Wars fans. The fact that they killed him off without ever giving him any sort of peace of mind, just absolutely disgusting. Not to mention what they did with the original trio, Han, Luke and Leia. Never in the scene ever again. I will never forgive whoever made that movie because they don't deserve to be mentioned. In any case, 9 to 8! As Ents Academy are making a movie of their own and a move of their own. They've got the rifles out. They've got a little bit of control here already being exerted towards con Cave. If I'm seeing this correctly, it is going to be, of course, Milzi that's going to be playing control there. Good Molotov, burning him out. And we see Viperio focusing their efforts to try and find a little bit of early control. <sighs> Podi, I'm not sure if he spotted that or not, because he probably would have taken a shot if he had seen the player. See Zodi waiting in corner, in the corner, and he will be peeking out, finds one, good trade, a decent damage on Milzi as well. So this is not optimal for Viperio, but they are able to keep the numbers equal at the time, or at, in this timeline. I know. I mean, he's holding that angle towards Donut, right? He's just making sure that he can push into it. Kind of gifted a free kill, and he stays in that position while the Molotov rains down on him. I'm a little bit surprised he actually stayed there instead of uh, falling back. And get ready for a big push. Do they check the corner? Milzi takes a bit of an advantageous spot. That's a free kill there, if I've ever seen one. And this round should be pretty much done for. Yeah, Tem with the smoke. They're going to have to cross, and there's no way you cross safely. There's an op there, but they don't need it. Potty already has it. That is going to be Ents Academy going up to double digits. 10 to 8, Viperio. They're cutting close. They're cutting close to the edge, but they're still just not over it. So, Ents Academy. Three more rounds, and they'll secure themselves round map one. Their own choice. And another time out here from Viperio. The last one they have available to them. This is the first map, by the way, just to point it out. The choice of Ents Academy. We at least have one more, and that's Inferno. And I'm absolutely hyped for Inferno. I love the map. I really do. Train, Inferno, and Cache. Those three maps are the goated maps of uh, Counter-Strike, and they need to be... Train and Cache need to be brought back. I even like Cobble, uh, Cobblestone. The Koble, as it was called in 1.6, a very different map than what it was in Go, but still, I kind of miss it, not gonna lie. I wouldn't mind Tuscan, though never took a liking to it, but I wouldn't mind it. But Cash and Train have to come back. And I really hope the community steps together and uh, steps up and pretty much forces Valve to do something about this. We've had the same maps for too damn long. Remove either Vertigo or Ancient and remove maybe either Mirage or Rework Inferno. But in any case, round 19, it's an A play. Viperio about to come into play here towards the main entry, and they do get the one, but the refrax, it's a team kill! Oh, that sucks. We've had quite a few team kills already today. Break the smoke. Get a free kill on Uppe, Pandito. Well, he certainly is an endangered species. He, yeah, okay, he's getting it. Scrimmo, the man of the hour here. Viperio might be given a ninth round. Still a 2v2 retake. It's all eyes on the player coming from Donut. Very important trade to be happening here. And he does get it, Sirva. The lineup is ready. And it's accurate enough. Bomb about to be ticking away for the last 10 seconds in a few. And good entry, Pandito. Oh. 
No time. No time. As that is the ninth for Viperio. They might have lost all of their players, but they are still winning. And that's what matters. They get themselves back on track. As Ents Academy will be licking their wounds once more. No money. They did get a drop of the M4. So they get an MP9. They get three rifles and an op. The op save gets them a, a long way. A very long way. So, Viperio, one away from tying it up, one away from completely breaking Ence's back and effectively forcing them to a full eco next. Oh, <laughs> what? Ten. Somebody check him PC, please. Uh, yeah, that was sick. That was pretty cool, not gonna lie. Uh, you don't get to see that very often. Though, keep in mind, we did see a lot of that at IEM Chengdu. Broke just going insane through the smokes. That's why he's the MVP, baby. I think his new haircut has something to do with that as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here we go. It's another A play, and this time they're getting caught, cut off one by one, picked apart one by one, chipping away at the numbers, eventually reaching zero as pretty much we have a clear cut victory for Ents. Without a single player lost, they recoup. Their economy, they keep five alive, meaning they keep that bank going at least a bit longer. And for Viperio, it is a very much do or die situation. If they can secure a win in this round, they will prevent the 12, the map point. They will prevent Ensis Academy skyrocketing economically, as well as getting that m mentality boost or morale boost, if you will. As the momentum has shifted, for the Finns' favor. Smoke into double. Who is peeking over that flash? I believe two guys in cave and speedway. Yeah, there we go. Miltsy with Henu. Molotov into corner. I'm seeing a lot of questions in chat about why they walked that smoke uh, previously a few rounds ago in Donut. They had to, they had no time otherwise. In any case, here goes nothing. Viperio will try their very best. They get to side, but they can't really get too far, too deep into it. Bomb is going to be planted. Yes, it will. Well done. That's that's vital. That's huge, actually. That's $800 more than they would have otherwise had. Loss bonus is starting to kind of, you know, get a little bit higher as well. So it will help them in the short term. But this round effectively lost, I think. Fandito should be looking to save the off. He gets one. That's a beautiful shot. But there is almost no chance he prevents this defuse from happening. And yeah, he's gonna... Oh! Oh my god! What the... Fuck. Oh. Yeah. Fandito. I think the Czech beer and the... The Czech vibe has to do something with that guy. Damn. What was that? Brother. Brother, ooh. I mean, yeah, this shot was sick, right? He gets flashed, he still hits it, but look at... No, no, replay. No, no, no. I hope we see it. For the love of God, please, let's see that again. That was absolutely sickening. In any case, it's round 22 here. 12 to 9. Body, 3 kill. Yep. Mango just barely misses that. Viperio. Licking their wounds a little bit. But unfortunately, it could be the end here for Map 1. Ancient reaching its climax in about a minute and 20 seconds. As Potty continues holding that B ramp down with the op. Oh, he even tags Uppe. That is kind of crazy. Breaks the smoke up. Saudi spotted, getting sprayed. Middle about to be taking control off as Pandito is out for the count. And I believe we can safely say that is a GG for this map. I do not see Viperio winning it anymore, nor having a chance to go into overtime even. I mean, 
75 HP together is what they have. And whilst it's never over until it's truly over, sometimes we gotta accept the, uh, well, unavoidable, which is 13 rounds to Ents Academy here. About to happen. Upe, just hoping for KD, I guess. I don't even know. Playing for that KD strat. But not gonna happen. There it is. 13 to 7. Final score of our, uh, well, of our, excuse me, 13 to 9, not 7. My bad. 13 to 9. I don't know why I'm messing up the numbers. But yeah, it is Viperio that take the L. Ents Academy take their own map pick. And they will secure it pretty, pretty nicely. As we get ready for map 2 Inferno, I'm kind of excited to see what Viperio bring out. They chose it. I love it. I'm absolutely excited to see it. And I just hope they give us a good showing on the T side. It was a bit lackluster here on, on Ancient a few times. We saw a few mistakes that shouldn't really be happening. Um, and it's not like there's much you could have done about it, right? Sometimes you just don't have control over the situation. Sometimes perhaps, you know, miscommunication happens and you kind of just lose it all along the way. But yeah, Viperio, hope they come back together for that second map of Inferno. For Ents Academy, though, they're doing splendidly. And we'll be going to a short 10-minute break and then getting ready for that Inferno. See you soon. Don't go anywhere.
Are you sick of We're back, everybody. We are back here with our second map soon to begin, and it's Inferno! Thank God, uh, at least something good's happening here. But yeah, Inferno is going to be up next. I'm kind of excited for it because, you know, it's a map that we don't get to see very often in the pro scene anymore, at least not as much. And um, I'm kind of excited to see what my video have prepared for us. It's a map that has been around for a very long time, and it's a map that is pretty much the most CT-based map of all time effectively and uh, from what we've seen so far from ENS Academy they are sometimes a little bit you know a little bit on and off they certainly know how to play but they can lose themselves in the heat of the moment Viperio seemingly having good structure seemingly having good um, reads and good understanding of how to play here uh, get, do the same kind of mistake perhaps at times getting too excited about a round and then kind of going head in first without really thinking about it so yeah, second map, cho chosen by Viperio, uh, they will be the ones to start T side, most likely I presume Enz chose CT to begin, and on Inferno, having 4 to 5 rounds T side uh, is already a great start, so hopefully they can keep it up, hopefully they can keep, you know, keep that performance up and get quite a few rounds strung together early on. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the online series of Europe number one. It is the second season of CCT and the game is live. As we get ready for the pistol, <laughs> of course. The pistol here will be with dual Beretas on Hindu, dual Beretas on Milzi, and we've got four, no, yeah, four Kevlars and a single utility buy on Zodi on the side of Viperio, and it will be second mid to A. I love this. It's a tactic that uh, we used to run when I used to play um, semi-professionally. Basically, you would walk into second mid, try to hide out, th uh, hide out through apps, and then basically bait your opponents to try and challenge you either middle or, you know, kind of have uh, a bit of an idea what's happening. Oh, Hennu. Hennu, that's a missed opportunity. Dual Metas are out. He gets the first, though. Does he get a second? No. Hennu denied as Mango is able to reply. Four players coming in for the defense and four players coming in for the offense. Bomb is about to be planted safely into side, though. So it's not going to be great to stand on short. Mango's going to have to be careful. He's got a P to Fitty. So he's going to be very dangerous at uh, mid to long range engagements, but Dual Beretta still not to be underestimated. Two players coming long, two players coming short. Control here going to be taken over. Mango with the first. And it will be Viperio, I believe, most likely taking the most out of this round and a W as they're cleaning up what remains of Ents Academy CT side. And a beautiful pistol. Starting off with the second mid uh, walk into apps where Henu had an upper hand. He saw two players cross. He saw the third and then took to the engagement. Didn't really work out too well. And at the end, of course, unfortunately falling after a single kill. And that will be a full eco for Ents Academy as we go to our second with Viperio buying in two, uh, two uh, Mech 10s and of course Galil's NAKs. Lovely map. Very hard map to play, by the way. I would still say among the hardest maps to play because it has one of the hardest sites to retake in the whole game. Uh, a site effectively. Uh, one of the most difficult sites uh, to go for, just like, uh, of course, on Anubis these days. Uh, extremely difficult to retake the site. And Viperio here, already starting off strong, cleaning out two players. I like Potty's idea with the Zeus. Perhaps he can get a free kill here and a free rifle, but it seems like Viperio have made the right decision. They will be going B. And there is no doubt about it. Second smoke onto flowers. It's a beautiful smoke that bounces perfectly on top of that shelf. Which allows you to pretty much cover both CT and boost when you do not get yourself caught off, off guard or out of position. <laughs> Zeus. 
The skin for the Zeus is pretty sick, though, not gonna lie. Goodbye, Monsieur Miltsy here with a nade when he ate it. And that's a beautiful skin. That's actually a sexy skin. Like, Zeus with the thunderbolt and the lightning. Yeah, that, that's what you want to see on a Zeus. But in any case, we go to round three. It is the first challenge here for Viperio as well. There are still Mac-10s and Galils in play, and there are four players on the CT side without helmets. And those Mac-10s and Galil will come into play quite handily. Jiggle peeking that corner. I believe he might have hurt somebody at car, so immediately smokes off. As four players have been rotated to A. I believe there's a double set on short. Yep, they've just been boosting up on that rooftop. One in cubby long. And the rotation towards B should be happening soon because you are risking everything with Milzi being here alone. But B is retakeable, far more than A. So I understand the, perhaps the uh, the turn they're trying to set on the side. Good name. That's going to do serious amounts of damage. Yep, Mango's going to be killed. Kobe has a 4v5. Will kick off and through the smoke. Sirva gets Grimo. It's Pandito that gets tagged heavily as well. There's... Quite a few smokes still available, but Zoli, whew, good reaction, brings it home for one. But is it coming home for the round? We're about to find out. Pandito, low HP at eight, still gets away with a kill. Smoke into Banana, spotting the player close by. Pandito in trouble. Oh, through the smoke goes Zoli. He tries, he does not get it. Tim! Secures the win here as the, the bomb is already being defused. And that is going to be another round. Well, not another, but a round two. Team Ants Academy. Oh, that name. Ouch. He just hit it a somersault. And of course, the smoke kills. We're seeing quite a few of these these days. And the good thing about the smoke day in CS2 is that it is volumetric. So it actually is affected by the environment. I love that. Not only that you can break it apart with the, sm with the nade, but because you can shoot through it, the opponents can actually see where you shot from so they can return fire to a degree. And obviously different weapons do different amounts of uh, clearance in the smoke. Uh, let's say the M4 does a very small hole, the AK a little bit of a bigger, a shotgun creates a huge ass hole. Um, and that is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie, I like that. It, it creates more diversity in how you play those smokes and how you, uh, how you util utilize them. And the smokes are no longer walls that you cannot cross because if you have a nade, you can always break it and push through it. As we go to round four, already damage dished on Bandito and Zodi. Action on Banana, taking control. Pandito could be in trouble here if he decides to be aggressive. Locking him out. Third player rotating back A, a fourth as well. That is the right call to make. You want to make sure you have that A under lock. As Viperio will be looking to focus their efforts to split A side. Coming through Bal, coming through short. Pop flash, but Upe! Oh! Pretty cool, not gonna lie. Accurate as ver as well as amazing crosshair placement. Flash into short. Here we go. In pit one on balcony. Two guys already coming to engage. Where's the second? Mango. He waited his time and perhaps waited a little bit too long. Pop flash short. Body on site. Spotted Henu. Body gonna be taken out as well. Pandita might have seen him. He must have spotted him. Yes, indeed he did. And it's down to the one man only to Sirva. My language, Sir, is cheese, so he's gonna have to cheese his way through this round, and I think he's already realized he has no way back into it. A site retake, nearly impossible. Even in even numbers, even with an advantage, A site is extremely difficult to be able to be retaken. Man, that is a sexy skin. I'm like, that is a truly good skin for the Zeus. And it has the, the gold. Uh, embellishments on it, so it really feels like the uh, the lightning bolt. <laughs> Salty. Sirva, want some salt? Salt on your head? Yeah. Love it. 
I love the vibe here. I knew, I knew you guys would uh, immediately pick up on my wordplay. A huge hole is what I wanted to say, but I added some embellishments on it. In any case, 3 to 1. Viperi are looking good. Really good here on the T side starting off. Um, solid openers, pretty good control overall. They seem to have the right idea how to approach both mid and apps always on point and banana control will be contested here good night Tenu. oh nice little prevention of the boost the nade will get the kill good by 10 absolutely fantastic and ends academy have no answer to this this will be four to one and remember what i said at the start if you can string together four to five rounds on the t side you're already golden Anything more than that you can take as a bonus, as just extra weight onto Ants Academy that will eventually break them if you're able to string it into a W, obviously. A bit of a slowdown. Uh, Pody and Milzy just hoping. For a free kill. thing here for S Academy is they kept the Kevlar's and will have a little bit of extra money to work with. Presumably could be even seeing an out buy in. That nade was glorious. And yeah, there is Potty with the AWP. An MP9 on Sirva. The rest pretty well equipped. And Milzy buys an M4A4. Okay, 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 okay. He is playing B, is he? Yeah, I presume so. Why am I seeing it wrong? Yeah, he's on B. Makes sense. I, I spoke about the M4A4 earlier. I'm a big uh, fan of the M4A1S, much more than the A4. But on an Inferno, for example, it is... Uh, it is a very useful weapon on Banana, because you can close that gap very easily. Sirva kind of jumping around there, getting himself caught out of position. Milzy able to reply. Nate does not do too much damage at all. And there is a very beautiful retake utility play you can do from the CT side. You throw it from the first box. It's actually Nico that I've seen do, uh, doing it on G2 uh, consistently when he's playing solo on Banana. He's being dropped utility, then he first throws a smoke and then a Molotov into car and it lines up beautifully. And you can really hold that front off for a good 30 plus, or actually more, a good 40 plus seconds at least, all by yourself. Milzy left alone on B. He's got a smoke in his hands. And we have four players walking up towards A site. Ooh, second rotation back to B. Seems like Kent's Academy is not convinced this will be an A take. And, well, it might not be. They could walk into Arches towards B, but nah, they're going to walk through long. Fair enough. And now it's all eyes on Ents Academy. Do they realize this? No, they don't. They're completely wide open. What is happening? Ents Academy, how do you make a blunder like that? Long was completely open for the taking, and Viperio just abused that beautifully. That's what you want to see. Five to one will be the result. And this is an excellent opener for the mixed European team based in the UK.
Again, a save. Tem and Milzi. Tactical pause for Ents. YT calling this. Looking to calm his boys down. Understandably so. You need to calm the spirits. You need to make sure they reset mentally speaking. And tactical pauses can be used for that. You know, take a moment. Take a breather. Drink some water. Like what I'm seeing. Ents Academy. It is an eco though. So actually one second I could see is... A buy here by ends. They have two rifles they can drop. They could have had four rifles and an SMG. I think that would have worked. But they don't want to tap into that long-term economy. So understandably, they're going to go half buy here. I can kind of see both things working out. Really depends on how you're feeling and if you're confident enough to try it out. Because if you do screw it up, you're going to be pretty much wasting another round afterwards if you fail it. In any case, it's going to be, again, banana control contested, Sirva, he's still alive, taking a few pot shots with the 5-7, well, decent damage, I guess, on Pandito, they're keeping banana control, that is what matters, right now, Viperio might be keen on going towards A, they might actually find an entry here for free as well, one on that rooftop position on short, what a flashbang though. Hendo still anti-flash setup. Finds a secondary, the 5-7, a deadly weapon. And it is a beautiful secondary as well from Temu here. He shuts down the attempt on mid. And Ents Academy might be given their second round on an eco of all. Of all the rounds that you could win, an eco one, well, that certainly goes a long way. Three guys defending a site. Viperio, they have to stick together. Mango and Pandito. The op can still be as deadly as ever. And Mango clears out Pit, at least the close player, towards Car. Does he expect Henu here, though? That's the question. I'm not sure he will. Second player comes out swinging from library. I don't think they're aware. No, they are not. Henu finds Pandito low HP. He dinks. Mango, and now it's a 1v2. Mango has to save this best he can. 15 seconds. Time is of the essence. He will plant, though. That's huge. That gives them another economical boost, plus a little bit of a time constraint for Ents Academy to try and save this. Sirva coming from short, though, about to spot him as Mango gets Hennu. It is going to be the round still going to Ents Academy, and <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to smoke myself. <laughs> three, three smokes on site. He's like, you know what? We're not gonna let them go to waste. At least we can use that utility, boys, and I'll defuse it safely in the smoke. <laughs> oh, and I love it. I love Sirva's uh, mentality here. Uh, amazing. It's my OCD speaking, obviously. It's, it's what I like to do as well. It's like, oh, a Molotov? Let me throw that. Not under myself, hopefully, but, you know, can't let it go to waste. This was this was fantastic. Henu, the timing here, the fact that he gets the free kill on the upper, because if if he's watching Pit, there's a very good chance Pandito gets the kill with the op. And then obviously it's a 2v1 and that's a different story altogether. But here we go. It's another buy-in. Ramp B control. Oof. That was a very aggressive move by Miltzi. Not sure. How exactly they went about doing that without a deep smoke. I feel like perhaps a little bit too eager. This is what I talked about earlier. The overconfidence can be sometimes more distracting than ever. Oh, what is this? The wall bang doesn't work. Body find Skimo. Where Skimo? Uppe coming in through apps again. Pop flashes over that chimney position. Body is still watching the corner. He has 100 HP, so the nade will not bring him down. And look at, look at Sirva. How in the world does he ever get in a position like this? As Pandito is left alone, he's running B. And I'm not sure, th oh, they missed him. They must have missed him, yeah. They completely forgot about the fact that he could have already crossed. And that is a 1v3 clutch. Pandito, can he do it? Usually the one offing, but...
Can he do it with an AK? He's low HP, so one bullet might already be enough to bring him down. The spray down from Sirva is enough, and that is the third for Ens Academy. The lucky break for Viperio is the fact that they get the bomb down. Tactical pause immediately called. Pap, of course, the coach of Viperio, taking a moment with his lads to talk it out, to see if they can find some hole in the defense of Ents Academy and abuse that. I believe Banana is definitely a weak factor for Ents Academy. They're consistently aggressive on it and predictable because of it, and you can punish them with that. Good nades, though. Pandito down to 40 already. Hendu finds Upe. That was a challenge from uh, from Apps to second middle under bridge. Upe, unfortunately, not ready for the challenge there. Molotov timing. Mango is waving for a peek on mid. Hendu's already rotated off of A, and they are reading this very well. Lance Academy currently in a good standing. Seems like they should be able to hold the ground. Execution towards B being set. Smoke into ruins. Sirva is there. He's most likely going to push through that smoke to site. Molotov into triple. No, that was dark. Excuse me, no, 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 that was dark, Molly. Pandito finds Hendu in CT. That's a good start. He went a little bit earlier than expected. He is burning away a bit, but he is still alive. The player's about to peek in through the banana, but Sirva! What is that? What a spray down! A hat trick leaving Miltsy to clean up the rest. And that is the Ents Academy on the shoulders of Sirva as he absolutely destroys the push. And even with Pandito going before the Molly's land and the smoke's land, he is unable to predict that Sirva would be this defensive about this. And that is the fourth round for Ents Academy. Now an eco for Viperio. They have no choice. A partisan buy for Upe. He's got the AK. We got a mech 10 on Scrimo. Pandito again, my man's taking so much damage early. My man's is really a punching bag for the nades. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. Scrimo getting caught just as the smoke blooms. It locks out Viperio from Balcony, from the waterfall. Polly should be able to get a kill here, especially on a slow peak. <gasps> okay, jump spot. That was a good clear, but can they do it again? Yes, they can! What a shot from Polly, though. It's Sirva to manage it up on Mango and Upe. Good clear on Arches. He's able to predict the secondary, perhaps coming from Beam even. As in Mini Pit. It is Tem, Hennu on broken wall, and Tem already engaging, Upe cannot push through long unless he's got support through short. It's going to be Zodi coming up there. Without a Kevlar, he is in dire straits though, and perhaps they could go back B. Absolutely an option here. Miltsy is predicting somebody walking through Archers through CT, hoping to get a bit of a backdoor entry to B. Instead, both back on Banana, running up. They don't have time to waste. They will slow walk it, which will burn more seconds of the clock. And with 3.2 seconds required to plant the bomb, you could be in trouble. And right now, the decision for Enz has to be made. milsey has got to watch it. He does. He gets caught, though. Upe, what? Milsey did 
couldn't even get the shot off. As that is a 2v2 retake on B. Tem is at 46. Now remember, nobody has Kevlar on the side of Viperio. So every bullet that hits will absolutely corrupt their aim. And Zori, off. This is a position that is rarely cleared. And it will be enough, Zori! Let's go! 1v1 now as Tem comes in to play. Upe, he's got the hopes of his team on his back. Once again, Viperio will require individual performance to come out shining. No smoke. Oh, there is smoke. Never mind. But Upe is ready. And that is round done for Viperio. What a win. What a clutch by Upe, by the way. The man's got four kills in the round. He buys the hero AK, and that is why you buy it. That is why you buy it, indeed. Round 11, gentlemen. Let's see if Viperio can break hands once more, because this would literally push them down into that worst potential economical spot. They would receive uh, $1.9,000 loss bonus. Not optimal. Oh, this is a very dangerous prospect, but Henu gets away with it. Comes in close, gets a kill, and it's all eyes now on the four players remaining. Miltsy, that's a bit of a bait and switch. That's a bit of a bait and switch, but Bandito still checks it. Quick reactions. And he again takes so much damage from the nades. The man's truly a punching back for all the utility. As a secondary comes in through, Zori's got a bad engagement, but he still wins the duel. As Sirva. Trying to keep clear, but Upe unnecessarily gets himself killed on mid as Henu is keeping control of B. Pop flash to the smoke, sees him jump! And that is round done. Ents Academy pick up the slack and cancel out the victory calls for Viperio. This should be a half buy, but they will put another AK in the hands of Screamo, a Galil in Pandito's hands, and a same one for Upe. Ah, he sells it. Or did he drop it? I'm not even sure at this point. But the point is, they are buying. They will not be wasting any time with an eco. It is the last round, of course. Why would you eco? <laughs> I caught myself there. Not gonna lie. Still running that 15 round halftime. In any case, Upe on the MAC-10. AK and Galil for two players. And of course, Deagles for the rest. Viperio looking pretty dangerous going into A. They're gonna try and do this quickly. Good molly timing. Forces them off the angle. A smoke to top it off. And do they go through this smoke is the question. Do you really want to go through this smoke though? I think you have the time to wait it out. You've bought into the round. You don't need to throw away your weapons for nothing. On short it is going to be Poddy with the op again. Takes the shot, misses. Angled up once more. In app still Uppe with the Mac 10. Dangerous individual. He's proven himself so far very nicely. Six round T side Inferno is a good result. Viperio can be happy with it. If they can get the seventh, that'd be perfect. As we go to a A push, an A split, if you will, Uppe through apps. And four players through long, but it seems like they could traverse into CT and go B. Though it is a dangerous decision to make, especially this late in the round. What is this? Henu gets the trade off. Body ready. Keeps up the numbers. In apps still Upe. Body! And now down to Upe in apps. He's alone. He's isolated. And he's about to be put down. 14 seconds, time is everything, and Potty just needs to stay alive. Once reinforcements come in, it's game over, and it is round over. Ents Academy, tie it together.
into a beautiful knot here for this last round of the first half, six to six. As Viperio, once again, I have to insinuate, I have to, um, I have to uh, kind of highlight the fact that six rounds is not bad at all. And whilst, again, it's not ideal, obviously, if you are, you know, choosing this map and you have a really good start and you kind of end up in a 6-6 six six scenario, the CT side for Viperio, I'm sure, will be much more on point now. As we go to round 13, Ents Academy, we've got four Kevlars, body, I believe... I, what did he buy? I don't see a P250. He didn't buy anything at all. Oh my lord, he's just playing... For a sa he just has 800 bank banked up. He's saving for that op. Wow, that's. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty deep. That's pretty sick, to be fair. You don't get to see that very often these days. But here we go. It's in B split. Oh, Zodi! What a shutdown! He absolutely dim dismantles Ence's attempt towards B. Zodi and Podi. Who would have thought? Not me. As Pod is just kind of hoping to get a little bit lucky with a kill. And the only one that did not buy Kevlar is the only one left alive. Isn't that irony? It's like the only per player on the server right now that saved up money for that AWP in the gun round. Is alive in a scenario like this. A 1v3 where he has not much to deal with or not much to do and kind of try with. I mean... He's gonna try and plant. Screamo's gonna hear that. Rotations is gonna come in, and Screamo might even peek before rotations come through. It's quite possible that will be the case. Smokes on banana. He knows that the last player should be somewhere there. Bomb planted. And now Podi. What is the game plan, brother? Doppler Glock. Beautiful one. Oh, oh, he was not seen. He was not seen. Paulie's gonna come in behind. They gotta expect him from somewhere there, and they will check. Yeah, they will check, obviously. There's no way they would have forgotten about it. And that is seventh one for Viperio as they win the pistol here in the second half. Good start for the CT side. <laughs> Shaming their fallen players. Like, how could you have failed that? You only got three kills. Really, bro? Should have gotten ten. In any case, round 14, Ents Academy, they did get a bomb plant. We're going to be seeing the dangerous weapons coming out. The AK, the Galils. It worked out for Viperia on their half of T-side. Where they had a single AK to win the round with. On Upe. Up A. I'm not actually... I'm still trying to pronounce that properly. Is, is it Up A or Up A? It's weird, isn't it? I guess it's not. It's oop -e. Probably oop -e. Eh. We'll get it right one day. So. Ants Academy. With this buy. Losing a lot of HP on Tem already. Not looking too sweet. Mana control going to be established. It's Bandito alone, but he's got a Molotov in his hands. I would assume to throw it as soon as he gets first contact. Does he throw it? No. He's going to wait it out. That is actually... It's a very, 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 very good thing. He's got good utility control. Understanding that when you're low on util, every single grenade counts. Here we go. Round 14 ending up towards A. Two players defending. First to go is them. Second. Oh, the lineup. The lineup! Mango! What was that craziness? Viperio completely ignoring the wide angle towards Graveyard. Literally giving him a conga line. And him just letting loose the bullets as Viperio gets shut down. Tied up. Not yet. But soon to be. 
You bet, you're absolutely shutting down that push from Ents. Beautiful performance. And Mango... Mango crazy. Ooh, Sirva, nice shot. You can't even say that was an eco frag because that was a full buy, full force fence academy that absolutely fell through. Mango, the man of the hour. Hyperio, looking like they are an unstoppable force on this side of the map.